You're listening to episode 286 of the Major Issues Podcast, and in this one, we do a full recap and review of the latest and final film in the DCEU, The Flash. The Major Issues Podcast starts right now! Hello everybody out there in comic book land, my name is George Serrano, aka The Don, and if you're listening to this, you can only be here for one reason, it's a brand new episode of the Major Issues Podcast, brought to you each and every week by comicbookclick.com, and as always, I am never alone. Sir, if you could please introduce yourself. What is up, everybody? It's John Escudero here, aka Yogi. Yogi is back. We're here to talk about the latest DC film that is splitting a nation, seemingly, uh, its production and um, kind of what's going on in the scuttlebutt when it comes to the box office of this film. Yes, we will be talking about The Flash, but before we get into all the flashy goodness uh, that's out there, um, I found out that this film was first announced in 2014. Yes, sir. Not to uh, mention in development since the fucking eighties. Right, right, exactly, <laughs> right. So, uh, the the so when you think about it, the development and production of this film spanned the entire length of the Flash television series. That is insane, and he still <laughs> couldn't get a nod in the no. movie. No, I, <sighs> I. It's so crazy to me, um, and this is almost even kind of getting ahead, but it's it's so crazy to me how much the CW and Grant Gustin's Flash kept the idea of Flash in people's minds. I think alongside popular renditions of Flashpoint Paradox, the animated uh, stuff, some of the Injustice stuff, right? I feel like that show helped make Barry Allen a household name again because he, he wasn't a uh, thing at all for so long and then they brought him back to life and they just pushed him in everybody's face boom, boom. Right. he's barry allen he was always the flash gaslight time <laughs> right <laughs> um, to so, so many people uh wally would have been their flash especially if they're around our age you know they would have remembered the oh, animated yeah. wally yeah. west and wally would have been who was um in the comics for the most part uh but barry allen and I, I have a question and i it, it kind of is going to sound a bit sarcastic but i want to ask you as a comic fan is Flashpoint the only Flash story, or is it just the biggest Flash story? It is probably the biggest, most recent Flash story. And I'm, and I mean, honestly, I don't know that there is a another besides Crisis on Infinite Earth, which I feel like is the biggest uh, Flash story. But he's not. But he's like a central character, but like not in the story as much. So it's like weird, you know? Yeah. Uh, but I feel like maybe Flashpoint is probably his biggest story. But there's so many other. This is my problem with the whole Flashpoint thing. It's so popular and it's so big that it actually overshadows all, all of the actual Flash things. Flashpoint is not like Flashpoint was not a defining Flash story. Like it was a cool story and and it was a story that comes after a lot of development. After Barry Allen has done a lot of things yeah. before he decided to finally go, you know what? Maybe I should save my mom. It one it, for you, been, one for me. <laughs> it's been twisted. To where, right. like, this is the first thing he thinks of doing. Like, as soon as he figures out powers and time travel, he's like, I should go save my mom. And you know what? Now that I say it out loud, maybe maybe it makes more <laughs> sense that, that he is would a do something mistake. like that. Yeah, than, like, a veteran deciding a little selfishly <laughs> <laughs> after he knows better. <laughs> like, <laughs> but you, one of the things about the Flashpoint story that I always found strange is that if I can remember and we did a review of the book if you guys are interested as part of the major issues podcast but if i can remember correctly they don't explicitly say that he did it or they don't explicitly say that show that he did it right they like, never show it but i mean which I is kind of like, cheating i feel like yeah. a little bit <laughs> you know like he wakes up in a new universe and then i guess it, it's kind of <laughs> hard to think like how it's kind of it was probably hard to nail down the what like what is it that he does to keep her alive right. i'm just, i know the movie came up with a thing but I feel like it's a little harder to be like, well, how was he here when the reverse flash is there? And why didn't they fight when it happened? And blah, blah, blah. You know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Plus, we hadn't gotten 
like now when I think of the death of um, Nora Allen, I do think of that room full of yellow and <laughs> red yeah, light, you yeah, know, yeah. running around and stuff, like that, which wasn't in this. It makes a lot of sense. You know, there's going to be different interpretations and stuff, but that's now what's in my head. Um, and yeah, I guess hmm, let's get into this film uh, before we get into spoilers. Um, I want to say that I enjoyed it. I, I really liked it. And I find myself trying to express why I liked it. And it's kind of difficult because um, if you've been listening to this podcast, you know that Black Adam kind of wore me out. <laughs> like Black Adam, I feel like the things wrong with Black Adam are bigger to me than the things wrong in The Flash. I feel like Black Adam was gorgeous, visually gorgeous, and there are certain moments that people had a really hard time with the CGI in this film. But I feel like, to, and as somebody who watched CW, I just confess to that, CGI, bad, wonky CGI has never been really an issue to me, <laughs> so long as the story yeah. is, has something. There's heart and there's, you know, something. Yeah, I'm, you got a point there, actually, with the, uh, like, we've watched things with worse CGI, like, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like yeah. we've been through worse. I don't think this was that bad. <laughs> There's, there's even there's even something i i remember that we're i'm gonna get into in, in spoilers that i think is pretty interesting um but yeah i there was moments where i felt like i was watching you know like early mcu early you know like the humor was general but still yeah. accessible it wasn't like super meta or super scientifically or, or, or anything like that. Or it forced. didn't feel so forced. And I'm, I'm not. That's not. I'm not saying it's an MCU thing that the humor's forced or whatever. But no, I get what you mean. Like, like where insert joke here kind of stuff. Like, yeah, got to yeah, put a yeah. joke in this. Um, I th this film finds a way to have have its cake and eat it too in a very interesting way. Um, by being able to kind of call the problems people had with the initial characterization of Barry Allen to the, to the carpet, you know, and again, God, like there's literally almost a scene in here where <laughs> the Barry we want is yelling at the Barry we have. <laughs> yeah, and, yeah. <laughs> you know? <laughs> and, and so like, I found that pretty interesting. Um, I went into this fully understanding that this film had a job to do more so than a film to make, but it so happens to do both in a way that I feel like films like Iron Man 2 kind of don't yeah. where it has to do like too many things at once. Uh, this film did accomplish what they wanted to as far as a kind of a reset of the DC universe as it stands. But it told the Flash story and it told the Barry Allen story. And if it wasn't for some of the things in the headlines uh, of, Mr. of Ezra Miller, um, I would think people would leave this film bigger fans of that character and that actor. I and do. I, I agree with that. Actually, I feel like he he really he was the detriment to the film. Ultimately, like he was the biggest issue. He, Ezra Miller, yeah. not his performance, right? Uh, him, the person, like he uh, he he made a lot of people go into this with a predetermined. They were either going to hate it anyway, or they just weren't going to watch it. <laughs> like, right? Yeah. And the thing is, like now that we've seen the film, I remember when these allegations first started to come down and everyone was like, Oh, we got to recast. You can't in this film. This film is 95% yeah. Ezra Miller. And so this would have been a uh, nightmarish hell to, to sort of recast. Um, His charisma does bleed through the entire film. Like he, wa that, he yeah. wants to be in it. And he wants to do good. He wants to do well. Um, the emotional beats while they didn't resonate with me, I could tell they were done well, if that makes sense. Like I could tell the, I think the main thing that robs the emotional beats for me is that I've seen this story, right? So it's like, how many times can you get <laughs> your heart broken? Uh, I dug it. Story? I mean, I felt it, but I'm generally, I just like, I mean, I feel things on a general level. Like, damn, what if I had to leave my mother? Yeah, like, so, like, I, I could acknowledge, I could acknowledge it. Yeah. I could definitely acknowledge like, oh, wow. Like they're really bringing it in this scene. But I wasn't able to take myself out of it, I guess, if it, if that yeah. makes any sense. No, I um, can see that for sure. It happens to me all the time. Yeah. Um, 
so I would recommend seeing it unless you have some very strong opinions about the actor. I can't fight nobody on that. You know, it's the, it's the uh, Hogwarts legacy of it all. You know, yeah. I don't. Yeah, I don't. I don't, you know. I don't. I understand why you feel that way. I mean, it's object objectively, I can see how a, a torrent of negative headlines is going to affect a movie. Yeah. You know, like that's just is what it is. I'm not going to fight anybody to to like it or to go see it. Like you know, <laughs> you have to, man. You're missing out. Uh, it's no secret that you are all quite often able to find silver linings, uh, even in the darkest times in the DC universe. How did this film look to you as somebody who understood what this film meant to do, already knowing that half of the fan base was was lighting pitchforks for it, or lighting not, torches think, and p having pitchforks? It should be pitchforks. said too. <laughs> it should be said too. Like before everybody, before the fan base uh, decided that they didn't want to see this or whatever, I was already like, "Fuck this," because I'm not the <laughs> biggest Flashpoint guy. Like they were like, "Oh, the first Flash movie ever." It's gonna be Flashpoint, and I was just like, I'm just throwing my hands in the air, like I fucking give up. <laughs> I can't believe it. It felt early it. though. It felt early for what we know this story does. <laughs> and originally, like, originally this wasn't the case. It wasn't gonna be Flashpoint. It was gonna be a movie with the Rogues, which is what a Flash first Flash movie should be. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Barry yep. Allen is Rogues. God damn it. Yeah, uh, I can't believe I'm, he's gone this far without like those guys being household people. names. Like, we just got Boomerang on deck. <laughs> You know, like and they were built, they were doing it there in the beginning. They had Boomerang and the Suicide Squad. They had the little scene with the Flash and him, and that was going to be a thing for his movie. But you know, all the Snyder stuff happened. So yeah, we will never know. But I mean, it's a shame. It's a shame. I feel that Barry Allen has come this far, and he's a he's a name now in houses, but nobody knows Captain Cold or the Golden Glider or right, Heat right. Wave or you know yeah. the top. <laughs> come on come on and 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 muschetti the top during pride month bro you could have made some money this, this, this <laughs> you could have made some money this month brother the top and that's my brother and that's uh, it the bottom the bottom oh no <laughs> um nothing I, is beneath me but i am beneath everything <laughs> I I wasn't so all right. I was like, look, they they took away the normal flash thing. They made it a flashpoint thing, and then the trailer came out, and I was like, Arr. actually, let me let me rewind a little bit. The trailer wasn't what got me. I read the plot to this movie <laughs> because that, that I started so, coming out little by little. I remember um, a long like yeah. Well, I mean, so many. This movie has been in production for so long that there have been finished versions of like multiple finished versions of it yeah really, the version i read was like a year ago and walter hamada was still in charge of dc <laughs> and and the, and then uh there was supposed to be a giant crisis te a lot of crisis teases like the whole multiverse scene was supposed to be a tease for an un upcoming crisis movie they were going to do crisis on okay. nerves and in the original plot it was like, whoa, okay, they took Flashpoint and they made it a multiverse story instead of a time travel story. And I was like, okay, that's interesting. He lands on the wrong Earth and he thinks it's his future, but it actually is. Like, I just woke up, I created a new universe, and now I'm here. <laughs> like, right, right. Oh, yeah. fuck. Uh, and then, you know, I watched, I watched the trailer and the trailer confirmed most of the plot. I mean, in my brain, I already knew that since James Gunn was in charge and since all this stuff had gone on with Henry Cavill and The Rock, I was like, okay, well, the original version of the plot I read, there's a lot of that that's going to have to get ripped out. <laughs> right. But but the trailer showed me that most of the movie was still intact. So I was like, oh, okay, well, you know what? If this movie is what the plot leak said it was, then I'm down. And I mean, it was. It, it pretty much was the whole yeah. thing. Yeah. Um, that made it a lot easier for me to pick out what was supposed to be where and when and like, okay. I can see where there would have been a thing here. <laughs> I I also think that how do I say this? You know, there's been a, a bunch of different directors to take on these characters that were introduced in Zack Snyder's universe, right? Um this film finds a way to still pay tribute to that director's vision and that director's oh, yeah. in a way that I feel like the others don't. Like I feel like the others kind of ignore like they try There's to like wipe the slate and be like, well, this is, I get that you introduced this character, yeah. but this is my, this is how I'm taking it. And, and almost 
constant back and forth of different yeah. different views of when they're introduced in one and when they're introduced in the other. Go ahead. I feel like it's a mix of like, you know, somebody like Patty Jenkins who probably wants to. I'm gonna show you my my beautiful vision now. Now that I'm free of the shackles, and then you've got other people who are like James Gunn, where it's like I, I just don't want to step in somebody else's stuff. <laughs> like I'm just gonna yeah. do my own thing. Uh, and where, but whereas I feel like maybe for the first time in the entire DCU existence, Andy was given like the 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 entire tapestry. Like here, you know what? Take the whole thing. Do what whatever's you left, right? Yeah. Do what you want with it. Uh, oh, we <laughs> actually might have to remove that one big beautiful chin, but uh, yeah, <laughs> okay. Everything else is fine. <laughs> you can name him if you want. Right, right. <laughs> like, uh, but yeah, no, I felt I felt like this was the first time where it was just like, okay, you can do what you want. And luckily, it, it was it was this director and and his. I mean, was it him and his wife? Is it, yeah, is I think it? she's a producer on this, Barbara. Um, Ushai. that's always re- that, that's always really cool. Like the Zack Snyder, Deborah Snyder. You know, like you get to be like husband and wife. You get to talk about dinner over the the movie. Like, ah, oh, you know what I just thought of? Like, it's a like, cool. It's pretty cool. I mean, I, I uh, always. I mean, it's got to be cool because I think the opposite is the guy, the guy spending 20 hours, right? <laughs> in the <editing laughs> booth and it's a real Reed Richards, Sue Storm uh, situation. I'm sorry, honey. It's almost done. I swear. But the studio just came down. On Imagine me. signing on in 2014. And be like, <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry, honey. It's just a couple more years. Do you have the list of directors that have been attached to this uh, movie? I'm seeing I was I was kinda I was kinda glancing over it. My eyes locked on um uh Ricky Rick Famu uh, Famu Famu, Famu, Famu Yabi? I fuck me, I can't pronounce Fam, his fucking name. Famu Yiwa. Famu Yiwa. Yeah. Uh I remember he had signed on like right off of dope. I love that movie. Yeah. And he and cast Kirstie Clemens Iris. is in dope, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Kirstie Clemens is from dope. Like he cast Iris right from the movie. Like you brought her with him. Yeah. And I was in really 2016. excited. <laughs> I was so excited to see what kind of movie he was gonna do with Barry Allen because he's got a certain distinct flavor. And then he right. immediately brings like Kirstie Clemens. And I was like, whoa, like this is gonna be interesting. And you know, it was shortly after that dream was dead it did it did that die with the snyderverse was that the version that died with the snyderverse his movie well yeah this takes place around uh 2016 they hire him okay. on in 2016 and then um, they find so this out would have been bvs the, yep doesn't yep. make what they wanted to make and then yeah all this stuff um, happens they uh yeah like you said he grabbed on iris uh he grabbed old girl from iris he left the project uh, after not being able to come together creatively with the studio, which agreed yep. disagreed with the more direct, the mature direction, sorry, that uh, Fu Famu Yiwa wanted to take the film. Uh, um, his movie is the one that would have the rogues in it. We got robbed. We got robbed. <laughs> and I guess uh, it's so hard though because I wonder what it would have looked like in the the because the the, in the criticism Snyderverse? at the time. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the criticism at the time was the bleakness, right? And oh, I think man. he could have found a way to to as a person who saw dope, I think his style would have found a way to, you know, uh, balance all those elements. It, it's one I, of those things where I feel like maybe certain people from certain cultures are not able to see the story of hope that's being told sometimes where it's like you have to go through some stuff to come out the other side and it's like well, right. i've never been through that that just looked real fucked up you're like, you're <laughs> dra- yeah, like you're just getting dragged through it. <laughs> um they ended up putting this the uh, film on hold while they searched for a new director then ezra went to go do fantastic beasts um they hired people to do rewrites at one point they wanted robert zemeckis to do the film which you know leads to all the fa- the fast i mean sorry the back to the future stuff yeah. that we see um uh, Sam Raimi, Mark Webb, and Jordan Peele all turned down the project due I to quote unquote what, scheduling issues. What makes them go to Sam Raimi? Like, what time frame was this? Was this after Doctor Strange? Like, what I mean, makes him try to? Because he's 2017. Like this is 2017. No, nah, he's like retired, wasn't he? Like, wasn't he sleeping at home or something? Like, <laughs> why, why, why would they bother him? Or doing another <laughs> Evil Dead, something or other? Something. Um, I, and I think uh, this is around the same time where, like Jordan Peele, they were talking about like the Akira stuff. So I, I feel like that. To, I feel like yeah. I remember him saying he wasn't a fan of IPs or something like that. I mean, that makes sense. 
Um, he's there was too a big now. anyway. He's way too big. There was a directing <laughs> team of uh, of uh, John Francis Daly and Jonathan Goldstein that entered these negotiations in 2018. Um, then they Where were are they from? Uh, horrible bosses. Yeah, I haven't seen that. Might, that sounds like that would have been a bad they, movie. I don't know. <laughs> they, they co-wrote Spider-Man: Homecoming. Okay, that's their big. That's their big Bullet, uh, Bullet Dodge. No. Yeah, right. <laughs> they did. Uh, they also directed Dungeons and Dragons, though. Okay, they were the Dungeons bad. and Dragons people, and I heard that was pretty fun. On, on and off, then a 50 record. I guess. No, I like uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> they did the incredible. Well, they wrote the incredible Burt Wonderstone for whatever that means. I have no so. clue what that is, but I'm sure it's the one person out there is like, I love that. Oh, have you seen Game Night? Game Night's pretty funny. I haven't, but I remember being interested in the trailer and just not and just forgetting. And just I, that happens all the time, bro. That's <laughs> right over your head, right? Um, uh, nothing, nothing else really. And they have acting credits for some reason, but um, <laughs> yeah, that ends up not going through. Um, I guess after that, they, 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 they going to call machete. it something else. I don't know. There's gonna cost. It says the film's title reverted to the Flash. I don't know what it was gonna be called. Before <laughs> what was then. it before that? <laughs> I don't know what to say. I don't know. Oh, oh, it oh was no! They were gonna call it Flashpoint. Flashpoint. Yeah, they were gonna call yeah. it Flashpoint Ooh. in July God. 2017. How clickbaity is that? It's the most clickbaity film title of all time, and it means nothing to anyone else. It means it, you know, like. What? It bothers me. It really does bother me. Like I can't believe I was able to enjoy this movie sometimes. Because <laughs> like, right. it really bothers me. Even seeing it, every, I'm every, about it. everything that every lazy promotional tactic that you hate was <laughs> was, was used <laughs> in conjunction with this film. Like oh, um, you know, every sort of like yeah, we just pulled the book off the shelf and we're doing the book. Um, do you remember? Thing, I, well, go uh, ahead. What was that? No, I was gonna say, do you remember at one point they were talking about uh Miller and Morrison, Grant Morrison coming up with a script? They made their own movie up. That's yeah. right. He even yeah. thanks Grant he thanks Grant and his wife at the premiere. Yeah. Uh yeah. so I would imagine some elements of their story actually made it in to this. I can I can imagine that. I can imagine Ezra bringing some they being able to pull something out of this. Like, okay, yeah. this is the weirdest shit I've ever read, but the Chronodome thing seems cool. Like, I'll kill that. I'll keep that. Right. That, I that's, totally forgot that's about so that. That's Joe Morrison, bro. Like, that whole, you know, like that. I could totally see that. And multiverse. Oh, you know, that, that speaks all to the multiverse. They ended up getting Christina Hodgson to write a new screenplay. Um, Barry rejected. Fisher was at one point the co star of this film. <laughs> yes, which I believe speaks to the CW cameo. Uh, yeah, yeah, exactly. that's right. He was like, Victor wants to, Victor would love to hear about this or something yeah. like that. He says his name. I could see him playing with time in front of Victor Stone before I can see him talking to Bruce Wayne about it. Like Bruce Wayne's like the dad. Yeah. And I feel like Vic's kind of like the friend that you, you go steal the car with. And um, I, I want to like in a better not a better world i feel like the world that they wanted to link up would have been a situation where um vic would have been in this and he got the most out of this right like he's like he's the most gone from <laughs> from all of it yeah he's got removed in a race i was surprised he even got a mention victor stone the character even got a mention in the movie yeah absolutely ridiculous um these are just the titles of some of the stuff that we had heard was going on with uh the star before we get into <laughs> all of this so uh miller was accused of assault in 2020 uh gibson iron eyes parents have accused miller of abuse uh an unnamed mother and 12 year old child were granted an order of protection against miller claiming the actor threatened them with a gun a man claimed his three children and their mother was living in unsafe conditions on miller's farm a woman in germany has accused miller of harassment a report detailing allegations of grooming and molestation came out miller faced felony charges in vermont miller says that they started treatment for complex mental health issues um and then all that stuff with the ndas and um you know saying that they would uh seek mental health but then they pleaded guilty to a trespassing misdemeanor in the vermont court um, i don't know this person ezra miller uh yeah. from a hole from a hole in the wall yeah <laughs> i only know barry allen 
but right. God damn, that's a lot of stuff. I feel like just my mathematically, like that, that yeah, that yeah. can't all be like one. Like no way. Like you are an absolute villain. There was there was like, times where it, no it felt way. like it was coming back to back. Remember, it felt like oh, it's just it's just another yeah, it's just another allegation on uh, you know like two weeks bottle. in a row. Yeah, what's happening? I mean, it's it's like, and I know some people like I'm in a group chat, and this dude, it's not like one of my more active group chats. It's a new mm. one they threw me in. You know how that goes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, dude yeah. talks. I, I tried to I tried to bring up the Flash movie, and this dude goes into like a three page essay defending Ezra Miller. I ain't defending him, but just like. Thing. I guess he thought he was clarifying it to me. Like, well, no, you know, you see, this is how it actually happened. But I'm like, yeah. listen, I understand every situation has its nuance. Like, you're not telling me shit. I yeah. just objectively, we can get these headlines over and over and over again. It doesn't matter if it's actually you, if it's you, if you did it, if you didn't do it. Like, it just is what it is. You are just a problem child now. Like, yeah. you just affected the movie it doesn't matter if you did it or not that's uh, the weird that's the other weird thing that i find about it is like i i like you said i i know i get nuance i get a clickbait and outrage and you know how a situation can get blown up out of proportions um but this is just way too many to be like innocent until proven guilty kind of stuff yeah yeah you had to do something <laughs> this is yeah, some something. of those things you did unless this is an active campaign to randomly take down <laughs> <laughs> one actor right i will this give him is... i'll give him the guy that said his baby and his wife are on the farm you know that was probably like a, a hating baby daddy you know like i'll give him that one and the, like, the and the choking right we saw the, the choking, choking we saw that on camera <laughs> we saw the choking so that's a that's a thing you know um <laughs> there's police reports in hawaii so like that actually happened so like there's stuff that's that seems scuttled but it seems strange about like compounds and and uh you know grooming and stuff that we can't confirm you know if if he had consensual conversations with minors that were fine and upstanding yeah, yeah. we don't you know like we don't know any of that kind of stuff but we saw the choking i saw that 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 that's yeah, the thing yeah. that happened. There's, no, <laughs> there's no innocent until proven guilty stuff with that and i guess you can't bring him up and the you know production and promotion of this film without talking about the jonathan majors of it all right because i think that's yeah, what I that's where people are having the biggest uh sort of debate is this idea that seemingly since the Jonathan Majors accusations of domestic uh, assault came out, they've been mums the word about Kang. They've been real quiet about Majors in general. Um, seemingly there's some schedule stuff happening that could possibly be omitting him, or they could already be working on creative ways to not necessarily uh, lean the entire franchise on him, where WB didn't let up and they didn't stop supporting Ezra in this moment. Now, if you believe in redemption, that's sort of kind of the right thing to do, right? Is to stand by people who you believe are going through problems and are trying to get better. Um, but I don't, I don't, it's a, it's a hell of a business tactic is what I will say. Where do you stand on this? What do you think there is a easy answer to how a studio is supposed to handle this amount of uh, allegation? I think that I think one, the, the, like we were talking about the Ezra Miller situation, it wasn't the, the one, the clear cut one that I feel like they might, that he could have gotten in trouble by it's like by an employer for mm -hmm. Is the choking yeah. video right? Right, <laughs> and and that if he was at that, Starbucks, he would have got yeah. fired. Yeah, right. <laughs> <You> know, like, <laughs> I I can I can understand if they decided to get rid of him because of it. I can also understand if a if a studio is like, you know what, this stuff is hearsay. You know, like he he has it. Has he been charged with anything? I know he pleaded guilty in Vermont for the for the uh... for the for the choking. Is that? I don't think that's it. Let me look it up again. Uh, do, 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 do. No, felony, usually, bur felony burglary. Oh, I was going to say, usually uh, the charge will do it. <laughs> like, usually yeah, it's right. The, it's the charge that will get you fired. Right? Tres <laughs> a trespassing mean misdemeanor, petty larceny. The, the burglary and the larceny counts were waived, and he ended oh. up. Uh, pleading guilty to or they ended up pleading guilty to um trespassing, uh, trespassing that, misdemeanor. that's one of those where i could have understood if the studio just fired him but <laughs> like but i i, I guess you know, i'm not i also can understand that they weren't like calling for his firing you know like he it wasn't a 
uh, a violent charge or whatever. Uh, right. But the the Kang thing, I think comparing it to the Kang thing, I actually think Disney is handling the Kang thing pretty well. Um, just they haven't fired him, you know, like they haven't right. gotten rid of him. They yeah. are holding out to see what happens, and that's probably right. going to be the best move. Like that's always they're putting the a move. they're putting a velveteen dream. They're like, let's yeah. see how this plays out. <laughs> and hopefully, you know, hopefully, Ken doesn't go backstage and start recording people at their house. You know, yeah, whatever. You know, <laughs> hopefully, fingers crossed. Um, let's get uh, into the full spoilers of this film. But before we do, uh, do you recommend this film? Do you do you? Uh, to those who maybe are on the fence but don't have an issue, I think, it, with I think the star. if you love DC more than you hate Ezra Miller, then yes, I recommend this movie. If you can't get over, and I'm not saying that you should, I'm just saying if you can't, then maybe yeah. you know because the movie is it bleeds him. Right? It's it's it is him. He is Ezra. Like it's right. more bad. It's like kind of like the way Iron Man is like Robert Downey Jr.'s movie. It feels like Robert Downey Jr. everywhere. This, this feels might, like Ezra Miller. Yeah, this might get me into some hot water, but it's almost like a new uh, Michael Jackson project or a new R. Kelly project. Yeah, like, no, yeah. it's it's un it's unapologetically them. If you're going yeah. into any of that stuff, you're going in for their flair, their talent, what they're able to bring to the table. But if you can't stand them, and if you you're believe not gonna the like allegations it. against them, there's nothing that this film can do. Especially if, to, uh, especially if they're like, because I know a lot of people just see him as like a, he's a pedophile, and I was like, yeah, that's it. You know, like, once you see somebody as that, <laughs> it's very hard. <laughs> it, it is, usually, <laughs> if you put that label on somebody, it's very hard to walk it back. <laughs> um, and I think that uh, you know, like I said, it, it, everything will come into light eventually at yeah. some point. But yeah, I I, 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 I agree. Something like that is a lot harder to. Sit on. I feel like he would even yeah. be in jail. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. But, okay. <laughs> I, to me, I think it was because I it was probably taken out of context, and it was probably one statement out of seven hundred million. But the fact that that statement had came out from somebody of like the production team of like, oh, this film is so good, you guys are not even gonna think about the allegations. <laughs> <laughs> I, think, I think that also put a bad taste in people's mouths because you're not going to tell people, right? Yeah. Like, like you couldn't say that about literally anything or anybody else. You couldn't. You couldn't. Like, who would say like, "Oh, come on," like <laughs> that new Chris Brown album? Shit, you never even going to remember what he did. It's like, you know, let people. I People are gonna remember what they You'd remember. You'd be surprised. I mean, some people just don't remember what he did. But. Hey, he made graduation, bro. Uh, <laughs> he made graduation, bro. It is, it is what it is. Uh, but let's get into uh, this. So, The Flash is a 2023 American superhero film based on the DC Comics character of the same name, produced by Warner Brothers Pictures, DC Studios, Double Dream, and the Disco Factory, and uh, distributed by Warner Brothers Pictures. It is the 13th installment in the DC Extended Universe, and is directed by Andy Muschietti from a screenplay by Christina Hodgson, and stars Ezra Miller as Barry Allen slash The Flash, along Sasha Kale. Is it Kaye? I think it's Kaye, yeah. Okay, Sasha Kaye. Uh, Michael Shannon and Michael Keaton in the film Barry travels back in time to prevent his mother's death which brings the which brings unintended consequences um, I found it interesting that this is Andy Muschietti's first non-horror film is it I did yeah. not know that it's got like, it's got some horror elements in it like uh, I thought not not like like a scary movie like, it wasn't like a horror movie but there was like a scene where I was like that's right out of a horror film yeah and I also feel like to master horror, you have to master human emotion and yeah. human anticipation, right? Because that's how you do a jump scare. You, you're trying to gauge where you think they would be paying attention to or lull them in a false sense of security and then do something like that. So I, I, his understanding of human emotion, I think, really works here. I think it really shines in this film. I really like his uh, direction in this, um, and I think he did a good job. But let's start off. So our film starts off with our protagonist, Barry Allen, getting some breakfast before work. He has to keep his food intake up because of his super speed. Um, and, you know, that gives him a super metabolism of sorts. The front desk guy is taking his sweet ass time to make Barry's complicated ass sandwich. <laughs> so when Barry Allen is called by Alfred to help save people in Gotham, he suits up and heads over. So we're not actually at the uh, saving scene. 
But what do you think about this uh, beginning? And were you happy to see Jeremy Irons? Yes, when I was, <clears throat> I was definitely happy to see Jeremy Irons. I also read that this was a much longer scene at one point. Okay, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I guess I, the, the, I, apparently he was uh, he originally is trying to decide who he should go help. But it would have had like a wonder, uh, like a Gal Gadot, a Henry Cavill, and a Bruce and a an Affleck situation, and he would have had to decide which one is worth his uh, not worth his time, but right, which one he needed. But I guess they cut right to him. Okay, Bruce is calling you. I'm just gonna go help Bruce. Yeah, it's <laughs> fine. I mean, I assume that's because they had to, they wanted to get rid of Henry Cavill. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Irons is getting a bit old. Yes, this is the this is the first time where I was like. Oh no! I was like, my man, <laughs> my man, you know, but he's seventy-four years old, so he's older uh, even than wow. Liam Neeson. Um, I think he's around. Uh, let me see. I just wanted to double check this. Yeah, he, he's closer, like to Helen Mirren's age, and Helen Mirren was seventy-seven in the flat in uh, Shazam. So. Oh, um, we're getting there. We're, we're yeah, getting we're, yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah, but it was good to see him. I like his sassy Alfred, his little vest yeah. and his little glasses. Um, uh, I I like that they alluded to the other heroes because that makes a lot of sense. Um, and it wasn't just like their off world. Like I like that they showed footage seemingly of Henry Cavill Superman trying to yeah. trying to do something and stuff. Um, because I thought they were going to go to the off world stuff about it. What do you think about Barry's? Um, hesitance to be the quote unquote janitor of the justice league the guy who cleans up the messes i think it's like i think it's a it's a human feeling <laughs> like you know yeah. like man you know what i'm starting to feel a little uh used here nobody's coming over to central city to help me with my messes now that i ever <laughs> need the help who's helping me with the sandwich <laughs> this guy's <is> taking <laughs> this guy's <is> taking forever <laughs> what do you think about the new suit i I, it's, it was like we were this close to greatness. Is <laughs> are, are you? Aren't you one of the ones that did not like the like sort of glowing piping in the? No, I mean in the oh. the, the glowing lightning in the are in you, the comics. I hate. Yes. I hate the light <laughs> because it's one of those things where like you didn't do anything to the suit. You just added lines to it because you wanted to make it more toyetic. You wanted it yeah. to make more action figure looking. Like there's no I fucking. Like toyetic, bro. <laughs> they, 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 there's no reason in the world but at at least this movie kind of gave it a thing like it was it, it it's it's supposed to be redirecting energy that's what those lines are that's why his lightning yeah. comes out yellow when he's wearing. i like that and i, and I was like, and Ooh, am i yeah. wrong to like the yellow back no because no i think was a choice it. because i not because they didn't just get rid of it you know, they didn't just get rid they of blue. Explained it, man. That they feels so. Yep. That feels so yep. good. It, yep. it really. I know that's such a dumb thing, but no, nah, man, where, that's important. It totally is because the, that yellow and red, uh, literally flash, right? It, it's yep. so identifiable with that character. Um, the uh, the blue made sense in your mind's uh, mind in your mind's understanding of electricity and yep. lightning, yep. um, but to say almost that that barry was like almost short circuiting like you know there was no yeah. there was there was no uh he was, his up blue that loop. was his blue was pure electricity with nothing touching it that's just how it looks when he's got no control over it i was like that's yeah. sick which that makes a lot of sense makes a yeah. lot of sense and almost kind of speaks more to Zack Snyder's Justice League. Than, it does. Than, it does. Than anything else in this? I I want to say I was very surprised at how uh, how it embraced Zack Snyder's Justice League. <laughs> like it, it uh, acted as if it existed, but if you did yeah. not watch it, it did not. It yeah. didn't. It won't get yep. make you lost. Yep, one hundred percent, one hundred percent. I was like, "Wow, that slipped by." You know that. You know somebody slipped that by. That was <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um. So. Do, 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 do. Uh, baby shower. Yep, I said that. When yeah, when he manages to save several babies from various forms of gruesome death, he isn't even given a hero's thank you. I thought that this was literally like a meme. Like they can't hate him if he's saving actual babies. You know, <laughs> <laughs> if he's saving actual babies, they can't hate him. Now, this would be the time people would be first introduced to the select 
vision of, <laughs> of computer <laughs> graphics that Andy Muschietti wanted to introduce into this. Um, some people are like, well, you know, the Chrono Bowl stuff is one thing, but like, are the babies in the Chrono Bowl? <laughs> like, what's going on there? Um, I did not have an issue with it with this as much as I wanted to. I hear people saying it's like Scorpion King bad in no, some no, in some, no, uh, in some no, areas. No, uh, no, just, no, no. <laughs> I mean, listen, my thing when I saw this scene, I yeah. in, I immediately took note of the babies. But my first thing, all right, they fall out the window, and I see my wife gasp, and I was like, you know what? I don't think it bothers uh, normal people. I think normal yeah. people understand that there's no real babies you can throw out of a window. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I was that was that, that's like, there's no way you could there's no stunt babies yeah. that you can CGI yeah. other babies' faces on. <laughs> like the, you had to Dude, create dolls. This. Then dolls are dolls suck. You know, yeah. dolls really suck. Yeah, yeah. Um, so. I mean, and I like I like the shattering of the glass of the um, vending machine. The microwave thing is funny as hell because yeah, it, it it's uh, it's been reversed and people see it. They they've been using it as like an Ezra Miller meme now. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's yeah. a baby in the microwave. They, li they lined that right up, bro. I was like, <laughs> oh my gosh, it's all right there. Um, Batman and Wonder Woman. Uh, stop Al Falcone's terrorist group from releasing a dangerous biological weapon. But this whole act of heroics makes Barry late for work and his boss reads him the riot act. What does it mean that they were chasing Hol Holiday, the Holiday Killer? Uh, I, like, that's very interesting, he, right? Uh, was, he busy, was he busy doing the long Halloween like this late in his life? Or is Al Falcone just still around? Yeah, Ooh. he's just out. I think he's just out and chilling. He's just out there. Uh, uh, not did, even. What was that? No, I was going to say, um, what did you think of, of Affleck in this? In this uh, film, oh, in this role, in this moment, I'll say I, I really like. I really liked it. I think um, this was a great way for him to go out, especially that last, the final scene, which I guess we'll get into now. But I'll talk about it now. The the scene where he talks to Barry in front of the bar. Yeah, uh, I just it was like such a great Bruce Wayne moment. Like he was just he felt perfect. like the elder statesman. He felt like yeah. the mature uh older brother even father figure in that moment and bruce brings that to the team a lot of the time but we have not seen it um we kind of played bruce as a bit of like bit paranoid a bit anxiety ridden in the justice league right because he yeah there's only so much he can do but in this moment he or in that moment where they're speaking he has complete control of the situation there's a there's a maturity and a poise even with him being teased with something that could possibly change his life forever in a good way. He still makes a mature decision to be like, no, don't it, mess. Don't mess it was that. It was that one where, where he's like, you know, I can save your parents. And he just looks at him and he like, you can see, like, he, it, you can see Bruce thinking about it, which was the yeah. coolest. Like, that's good. Act. That's great fucking acting. That's why he's been goddamn ass. <laughs> <laughs> People forget sometimes, uh, man. People forget sometimes. <laughs> Um, but yeah, not, he just kind of, you know, like if, if it wasn't for that, we wouldn't have this, you know, like, uh, so, uh, great moment, great goodbye. I thought, I thought that they did the, they did the lasso of truth thing. Uh, I thought it was better than the justice league one, but I already like, I hate the, um, the I, 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 it, it, I don't hate the trope. I just, I, when I first saw that scene, it reminded it, it it sticks with me as a Joss Whedon thing, even though it was in the like original movie. Like it just reminds me of like Was it was it in Zack Snyder's Justice League? No, right? No, I don't think so. No, right? So maybe yeah. that's why I did I hated it so much originally. I was like, fuck it's goddamn Joss Whedon. So, so you know how that moment just reversed you back to the other moment, and so you're just like, yeah. To I me, thought that at first, but they did a thing, like the way they wrote that moment was actually pretty cool because as <laughs> Bruce started continuing to yeah because yeah. Aqu Aquaman's thing is like the thing with the the scene in the Justice League is with Aquaman and yeah he has bravado but no one has more bravado and secrets than Bruce Wayne you know like that's the guy you want in the last of truth admitting shit that, you, that he doesn't want to say um so I thought that was pretty funny and then Barry talking about like he's never had sex or something 
Um, I also like that they kind of leaned into the Wonder Bat thing. And he's just like, hey. Yeah, he's like, hey. <laughs> hey. Yeah. I thought that was pretty interesting. <laughs> uh, but to be honest, to be honest, I didn't really pop when Diana showed up because I remembered Shazam. From Shazam. I didn't yeah, get to man. Shazam yet. <laughs> I didn't get to like, Shazam yet. At this I, point, I it's like, how many fall. times can you just play the music and she just shows up? <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> I, I thought she got removed. So I was surprised to see her because yeah. I thought they took her out with um with Cavill. And uh, it, it it was also pretty like it wasn't very clear what context she would have been in, in this film. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, so that was another big thing is like, is she in, yeah. is she out? And even if she's in in where? Like is she in the Flashpoint universe? Is we doing this pre-Flashpoint stuff? Hey, I, I'm gonna say something too, and I don't know, maybe I'm sure I'm sure cinem cinema files are like, he's fucking pleb. <laughs> but I kinda like I like the stupid little cameos. I don't. I just. I don't. Yeah. I like. I like them. They. They're just like, hey, I'm here. I live in this world too. You're welcome. I'm out of here. See ya. And I'm just like, that doesn't hurt anybody. Like, I think. <laughs> I, I think I would have been. I think I would have been less for it if Bruce wasn't also there. Right. You know. Nah. It would have felt like. It would have felt like we included Gal so that people know that she's. You know, like hey, they're I mean, they're around. But, but like, Bruce, that's my thing. Like, I kind of like it. They, they don't even have to show up sometimes. This is like it always kills when you 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 established this big world and then it's like you know i got into a big ass situation like two weeks later and where the fuck were the rest of you <laughs> like, there are you carry, what is it metal is raining from the skies <laughs> yeah like, where are you they are hella carrying crashing to the ground and no one that is, was like Tony getting minutes. drunk in California <laughs> somewhere. There's like 20 minutes towards the end of that situation where I was sure I was dead. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> he almost didn't get out. <laughs> it's like y'all laughing. We almost didn't get out of here. Um, what? Something that bled through to me as somebody who's been watching him in the performance for quite some time, almost. You know, like I guess over half a half a century. At, I mean, half a century, half a decade at this point. Jeez. Half a century, right? Half a decade <laughs> at this point. Ben Affleck looked like he was having a blast on this film. Yeah, he did. He looked like and he was enjoying himself. According to him, he said he had a great time rep reprising this role. Uh, in contrast to the infamously troubled production of Justice League, that I believe it's no secret pushed him back into drinking. Like I think that yeah. fucking yeah, it was Justice one of the League. Things. It like, was one of the things that fucked his life up. <laughs> he got my divorce. They yeah, fucked man. up my, my movie. I really liked that movie. <laughs> God, so, yeah. so, so to know that and to see him in this, I think at this point playing Bruce Wayne in more films than anybody. I, I um, don't think. I don't think they could have got him back for this if he didn't have the. Uh, the, cathar the cathartic moment after Zack Snyder's Justice League. Remember how he was defending that shit to the dude in that interview? Yeah, they kind of yeah. tried to shit on him. He was like, "Listen here, you son of a bitch! <laughs> like, like that, that is a win. You will not he, take that from me." He, <laughs> he feels he feels very much to me like how Andrew Garfield feels. Like he's a good actor who really, really loves this kind of pulp, pulpy character. Got it, kind of messed up for them, but would I don't think is against coming back because of the love i think ben actually loves batman you know i, th I think it's hard to be the actor that says no to batman um and i, I think, think that he read the fucking dark knight returns and he was like this is the greatest thing i've ever read in my life nobody ever showed me this batman and he's just been <laughs> attached to this batman i love him he's old think like it, me he's a he's like <laughs> tight he, he's tight or was tight with kevin smith who you know is a humongous batman fan so you yeah. got to think that you know those I conversations he borrowed happen. it directly from him <laughs> me, well, uh, Kevin's in a weed nap on the couch and he's like, What's this? And he just starts going through and he wakes him up. He's like, We gotta no, do this. I just imagine, like, legitimately, <laughs> I legitimately imagine, like, when he first got into the thing with Zack Snyder and they're like going over the original material to kind of give him his inspiration. At some point, this man fell in love with Batman. You it's see like, him on the tank in that comic, bro. That changes your like, life. <laughs> he's like, I, I want to do that. Can we do that? <laughs> <laughs> what? Everything. All of Every, this. The whole thing. This. He just hits him with the book. This. Yes. Can we do this? I want to. He's just tapping it furiously. This. I want to do this. <laughs> uh, so I think even, you know, uh, even though we don't know if we'll ever see him again in this role, I think that he was very comfortable both as Bruce and as, uh, uh, as Batman. And I like the blue. Uh, I like the blue outfit. 
one the blue outfit was amazing i hate that it had the chest thing on but i understand that the idea is that he's old he's broken and he's keeping himself together yeah two i don't know that we'll never see him again because originally uh he um he does get erased from the universe but mm. a post credit scene would have had him send barry allen a message in a dream that uh that kind of hinted that he was still alive out there in the multiverse somewhere and something is coming oh wow so, so i mean at some point he was at least okay with coming back <laughs> like later on for at least one thing yeah but, then, but they did ask him about james gunn universe and he was like i have no intention of making a movie with those kind people they're kind people i promise you they're kind i don't want nothing <laughs> to do with them i want nothing to do with them <laughs> not in a hundred damn years <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so Barry Allen uh, seems to take a lot of pride in his job, uh, which may stem from the fact that his father was wrongfully imprisoned for the death of his mother, making seeking truth, you know, pretty important to him. He I mean, got, I, go ahead, brother. I was going to say he got that job from Bruce Wayne, right? Yeah, yeah. It. I feel like does Justice League at the end of that? I don't. Think he got that I, job. I don't know so, that it does because, like, the whole. Justice League kept a little bit of the Bruce Wayne Barry Allen arc, but Zack no, but I mean, Snyder's Justice League his, has the does, whole arc. But he shows up to hit, like the the father's jail to tell him that he got a job, the job. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. See that he slaps the, the paper on the screen. Something oh, I got or a no. job, Dad. Yeah, something or other. But it was a different dad. But that's a, that's a whole other conversation. <laughs> from, from another day. Um, yeah, we meet Iris West, Kirsty Clemens, who conducts an impromptu interview asking about Barry's. Uh, dad's appeal which is tomorrow um this is when one of the statements gets made where she's like i felt like we've seen each other recently that can only lead to the tax yep. justice league correct yes it is that's the only that's what they're talking about 100 percent. and he's like no no i don't know what you're no no about. we did that that's not canon <laughs> He's 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 Warner Brothers. Right there. Yeah. No, no, no. That actually didn't happen. If you see, if I explain the situation from the beginning, so Batman versus yeah, Superman. Right. <laughs> so we're making Man of Steel, right? <laughs> we're thinking. <laughs> um, uh, yeah. So that's the first one. I was like, I was like, oh yeah, they did see each other, and I was like, did they though? <laughs> I was like, wait a minute. <laughs> Uh, Barry gets flustered when she makes it seem like Barry's the only one who thinks his dad is innocent. That was kind of a jerk move. See, oh, he's man, like, that was such a dick move. He's like, he's innocent. He's like, you believe he's innocent, right? <laughs> he's like, uh, <laughs> the fuck? He's an, he's an idiot, too, because she was willing to do some things to to make up for it. Yes. She was like, listen, I'm going over to his house. I'm going to get drunk. I'm going to fix this. People he's ready to do like, that. Yeah, man. He's like, I'm going to leave. No, I'm going to save my mom. <laughs> you idiot. It's right there in front of you. She's giving it to you on a platter. <laughs> right on the platter. Literally delivery. She door dashed that come shit to him, bro. That makes no, Please, makes no sense. Back. Run, Barry, run. Um, uh, so, yeah, he stops the interview because he's supposed to be uh, helping his dad in his appeal the next day. Uh, so he speaks to his father and tells him, like, not for nothing, but we don't really have any more evidence. Like we we checked and uh, we have a, some cleared up security camera footage, but you can't see your face, so we can't clear you. And his dad's like, ah, screw it. You know, it is what it is. I love that his dad's like trying to comfort him, but Barry's like not listening. <laughs> he literally suits up and goes to his childhood home as his father's like, no, don't worry about it, man. Sometimes I think I'm better off in here and, you know. Um, and Barry's just reminiscing about uh, the day his mother was mysteriously murdered while his dad was picking up a can of tomatoes. Um, and in a rage, he runs as fast as he can and accidentally realizes that he can travel through time and pick a time and place to travel to. This is the birth of the chronosphere in the film. Um, I kind of like it, give it a little bit of a cosmic treadmill sort of feel because he doesn't yeah. really move. Um, talk about the chronosphere and... Um yeah I like the closer. idea I like the idea that it's it's a it's an experience personal to him like the it's a chrono bowl because of because Mary Allen envisions it that way like it's yeah. not like that's the natural way it looks or anything you know like yeah. I was like okay instead of establishing cuz I was I was really weird about that being uh is that the way the multiverse looks that's strange no, but, but it's uh, it, it ended up being alright I ended up liking it that was really cool so I think this film is going to suffer from literally being out two weeks past another multiversal <laughs> film. There's probably 
<laughs> and then he's, a year passed uh, No Way Home and Everything Everywhere All at Once. And um, it was one of those things again where I'm like, man, th- th- I think the casual audience is going to have an issue with it. But then I'm like, God, I've read so many fucking comics. That's what yeah, ends up yeah, giving me yeah. a shield. I feel like sometimes, like some of the, so, even even some of the some of the emotional beats in this movie where i felt like there was just not enough time for you to care about like supergirl or like the yeah. batman's death if you or i mean we're already in spoilers yeah we're full in spoilers. <laughs> yeah, you, can, you can totally talk about that but like i felt like just having a, a gazillion sitting on a gazillion pages of universe stuff i was like oh they killed the batman like i would hate i hate it when they kill batman like yeah, yeah. it's so sad <laughs> yeah <laughs> So it's the same thing with like the multiverse movie. Like, oh, this is another multiverse. Like, that's fine. I, this <laughs> is the only. Is this the only DC film to ever kill Batman? I want to say yes, and that was wild. To me. <laughs> that was wild to me because they didn't even undo it. Like they just smoked him over and over and over again. Like, hey, bro, you know what? I, you know what I call that? I call that the Harrison Ford clause, bro. That's the Harrison yeah. Ford clause. Yeah, I'll do it. You better kill my ass after though. Did you notice Michael Keaton did no press for this film? None. No. No. I think, and I don't blame I, him. I think he's mad about Batwoman. Yeah, or Batgirl. yeah, yeah. I think he's bothered because he didn't just lose Batgirl. Like he, he filmed for Batgirl. He filmed for Aquaman. He filmed for The Flash. They were developing Batman Beyond. Mm-hmm. All that stuff died. The Flash movie got a little chopped up. Uh, I and don't you gotta imagine. You gotta did. imagine they were they were talking sweet to him at one point. Yeah. Right? Like yeah, to get are. him on board and get him to do all this stuff. And maybe he was rounding the corner. Maybe I can. And then all of a sudden, yeah, well, I don't think we're going to need you. <laughs> like we uh, thought about it. And never um, mind. yeah, never, never mind. mind. <laughs> and it's like, okay, what the hell? <laughs> and he's like, bro, I just came off the Morbius set. <laughs> you know, like, what are you? <laughs> they just got me doing some multiversal bullshit over there. He's like, I'm kind of sick of all of this. Yeah, I don't think one... I want anything to do with any of it anymore. Okay, Michael. Stand on that X. Okay, so you are surrounded by the worlds colliding <laughs> in the Kronos. <laughs> like, what do you want me to point, bro? What do you want me? What do you want me? What do you want me to say? Uh, yeah, I do not blame him uh, for any of that kind of stuff. Uh, so the Chronosphere. This is another uh, time where we kind of see the the graphics because he pops his head on in on that baby uh, when he goes back in time. Um, two things I wanted to know. Thing I want to know number one is by him being able to peer the way that he did and I, there's a lot of axel jokes from uh <laughs> thor love and thunder yeah. but that I that it, idea I of him better. i thought, I thought so, it looked a I lot thought, better than that <laughs> i thought so too but him being able to peer that way um at first i thought it was a little silly because we've never seen somebody just like kind of peek but speaks again to yeah. snyder's vision of how yep. he's able to go in and out of this time it automatically called back to me bbs that hit me. Like, that hit me instantly. I was like, "That's the yeah. heck." <laughs> I was like, "Okay, they're really, they're really this. This is not apologizing for a Snyder, which I feel like a lot of this stuff is doing. This is saying, oh no, this was the rules we established in this world. Let's take it to the conclusions that they should, they could have went if we all decided that we were going to continue the story, as opposed to some people saying, oh, we'll just, you know, leave it that really behind. feels, it really feels like a little epilogue to the Snyder verse." Like I feel yeah. like you, if you just watched Man of Steel, Batman v Superman, Justice League, and The Flash, you'd you'd get a satis- you'd be satisfied. I feel like. Uh, so I was sitting in here in the future. I mean, not, obviously, if, you, if yeah. you lived through it, you're gonna you're gonna remember the stuff that we went through. I okay, so I I want to say that it was a bit weird that a week before the film or a couple days i want to say before the film actually premiered that the the comments from director andy muschetti came out where he's like oh, okay well there's going to be some wonky kind of cgi but it's a stylistic choice um the thing that sucks about that is it would have i think a lot of people would have taken that comment in good faith if we hadn't seen so much bad cgi in other comic book films recently like yeah. rushed sort of let's get this out to make the money kind of stuff yeah, and i man. i want to believe him but isn't that the most convenient yeah, yeah i want to believe him but literally isn't that the most convenient excuse for it is this? so convenient i feel like okay i feel like it works i i feel like he he, he does mean what he's saying one because nicholas cage film has 
uh he filmed his cameo physically and there was like so there's no reason for him to look like that so i i do believe that they did it on purpose but i think that they did it because they needed to match the cgi of like, <laughs> <laughs> like christopher Reeves. Yeah, yeah so i feel like they were like what if we make this all look like what if we make it all look like that God. and i mean i do i get it like i get what he's saying but i feel like it was still like a shitty situation i feel like you could have just used there was there was so many different ways to do that and we'll get to that i mean it, we'll have the it, whole conversation it, yeah. about it it was visually it was visually kind of strange um but ironically there is a president um i we were talking before about how you know ezra miller actually cameos in the flash right flash has a moment where he's running through a bunch of different scenarios and stuff i remember that scene very well i remember the scenes that led up to that scene very well for some strange reason when barry is traveling through time and he ends up in different positions and they're talking to different people it is shot weird and the sound is weird it is yeah. shot in a weird perspective. Even the conversation he has with Miller, it's shot in a weird like perspective. A dream. Yes, a hundred percent. So there's precedence for this now. And when yeah. I remember that, I went, "Huh? Well, <laughs> another another piece of evidence for me that kind of says that the Carnival stuff was on purpose is that the there's a lot of scenes with two berries, and they're yeah. really well done." <laughs> yeah. like and that yeah. that is also cgi yeah. like that's also cgi so i'm like if the cgi can look like that for the barry scenes then yeah. i would believe that but then like i said i figured it out i feel like that it was a work backward situation we have to make it match some of the other stuff we made and then somebody said oh and they did it on the flash too so you you're, you're good, <laughs> like, you're good bro. You're... we've done this before they're gonna love it i applaud them for coming up with the chrono bowl because I, you know, while I do like how they showed it in the flash where he's just running and kind of is running through moments, um, you know, you got to come up with your own unique take on this. And I think this is this is a pretty cool one. You mentioned, too, the, the, the kind of gliding like in the middle, like it looks like he's on the cosmic treadmill. I thought that was that was really good. That was really yeah. good. Oh, let's talk about it. Better running, in my opinion, in this film. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I uh, think he's it, gotten the dynamics a bit down. Maybe it's hard when you're on a literally on a treadmill or in front of a green screen because there's a there was a popular uh, post on Reddit for the Flash um, television show where it shows other speedsters attempting to do the treadmill run that Bar that Grant does, and Grant's yeah. so used to it that he knows how to move his hips and his hands. Some people only look like they're moving their hands. They look incredibly stiff, like they're moving their hands. Other I know exactly what you're talking about, Nora. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> where she's doing the robot basically up and down. My feet don't actually move when I'm in the speed form. No, no, no. Yeah, no. so it 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 is kind of rough, but I think he's, I, he's I gotten like better that, at it. I like that it becomes a glide. Yes. Because like otherwise, how do you explain him not tearing up the floor under his feet? Uh, oh, like I, after a certain speed, he just begins to glide. He's flying almost because he's going yeah. so fast. I like that a lot. Uh, um, that they uh, shown right off the bat. I love that scene of him traveling from Central City to Gotham. You know, running on the water, then just running through the highway and stuff like that. I like how they depicted how quick that whole experience is. That was a great thing. Like some of the speed force scenes and like uh, the where he goes to where he first runs emotionally and they get the yeah. piano playing in the background and I was like, this is. It's almost it's really almost good. CW bro at that way. It's almost that. <laughs> No! So it looked good though it looked really good i'll say like if i was waiting for a flash movie and i wanted to see flash things they were giving me flash things to look at yes yes they were um so barry tries to explain this whole phenomenon to bruce who warns him of the butterfly effect saying if he interacts with anything in the past it can have disastrous consequences bruce leaves and iris west shows up to apologize and the two share a beer he was going to give it up, Barry. You fool! You you, you fool! fool. <laughs> you could have left afterwards. You goddamn idiot! Yeah, yeah. Uh, while in conversation, Barry realizes that if he can just ensure his mother leaves the grocery store with the tomatoes in the past, his father wouldn't have to go get them, leaving her defenseless and him to be charged with murder. And this doesn't technically mean he's interacting with anyone more so than interacting with the can. Uh, so uh, he decided to try a, this out. How'd you feel about that? Because I was like, 
I just kept thinking to myself, like, if his father stood home, like, what does does that, how does that stop Reverse Flash from doing anything? You know, it's, like, it's, just, it's 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 several things, bro. Because it's like, if he does this, he's on camera. Like, no one when they're yeah. reviewing the footage of of <laughs> the father, they don't go, wait a minute, why the fuck is? <laughs> I'll give him. Alley? I'll give it. I'll give him that. There's just no like no right minded person would ever think to to even recognize Barry as a person. Like if he did, even if he walked by without picking his face up, someone would be like, "Man, this person really looks like you." Like that's the yeah. first thing they would think to themselves. I feel like because if I saw a picture of myself in the 1500s, the first thing I would think is like you know like the picture of Pharrell. Like it's yeah, like, it's, the, <laughs> like it's the king. It's the Kingo effect that looks like your uncle yeah. or something like that. Yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah. Um, but you're right. <laughs> We're led to believe that this will, you know, um, kind of clear Henry Allen's name. But when we're shown the event, Henry Allen is basically there on moment of contact of the murder, seemingly, because he's outside and he runs in because Nora screams. So there's about a 30 second, you know, 30 seconds unaccounted for, but he still could have walked in and stabbed her. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? Like he came home from the grocery store. I'll give store, it. I'll give him that. Because if you weren't there, like that's the fucked up thing. Because like if you weren't there, there's no way to prove. Like there's just no way in the universe to to even believe that. But if yeah. you were there, you saw her. <clears throat> you saw her scream first. Yeah, we got the so Barry Allen perspective. You, so we you know could have sure. stabbed her. Totally could have stabbed her. Um, now I know that. And we know <laughs> that the uh, person usually who committed this crime in actuality is Eobard Thawne, the reverse Flash. My biggest fear in this film was that they were going to make this dark Flash element character that yeah. was leaked in toys, that they were going to make, he was going to be the kind of lazy because we don't want to do all the work, uh, reverse Flash. And I don't think that that's the case. Um, but how do you feel about them presenting this mystery and sort of kind of not closing it out i think not uh not even showing it leaves it open enough to where i'm like okay like at least he didn't change it and then he's confirmed afterwards like yes uh it was reverse flash and we will get to that but there's if there was a sequel which i mean let's be serious right yeah uh, I, I, don't, I don't think there's going to be a sequel but uh you know right. who knows um but there was also early on like he was Posting Andy, him being Andy, the director, posting like sketches of Rivers Flash. It makes me wonder like what happened. Interesting. Um, I saw that they somebody did a whole deep dive video trying to claim that Dark Flash is the one who killed the mother. To sort no. of said, no, God, no, no. no. God, why would he kill his own mom? He could even yeah. no. That was a whole I beef. Just, that was the entire beef for the, the first yeah. place. <laughs> it, is it, is. It, is, it is what it is. Um, they were saying that the tooth was like a symbolic thing, and I do think it is, and I'll get to what I think it's supposed to mean. Um, but yeah, one step at a time. Um, so yeah, he saves his mama, and um, do do do. Oh, yeah. So he does this as a success, and um, he's able to view an entirely different timeline when he grew got to grow up with his parents. I thought that was pretty cool. Like he got to run and yeah. see like his birthdays and growing up with his parents. He tries to traverse the timeline to the moment he left Iris, but a monstrous figure appears out of nowhere and pushes him out of the chronosphere. Uh, he ends up in front of his childhood home where his living mother and unincarcerated father still live. He walks in, greets his family, and even has dinner with them before seeing the 18 year old version of himself outside. Um, what, what do you think of uh, the, this new half Latino Barry Allen? Well, I, mean, I I I loved it, but I mean I I, I don't think I would have had an issue with it even if I wasn't uh, Latino myself. Uh, it's yeah. just it was like you know it wasn't that big of a deal. It doesn't change anything about Barry that they haven't already changed. Like this is already a whole different dude from the Barry Allen you know in the comics, right? Yeah. Uh, so so what if they change his origin? That's how I look at it anyway like so what if he's half what is it did they even i don't think uh, they even said vague half no, vaguely they, hispanic, they half <laughs> vaguely hispanic <yeah. laughs> um, i just didn't think a salsa song would be a plot point in this in this whole thing so i was pretty excited about that <laughs> i was like oh yeah the song she's always playing it's a salsa song that's pretty cool <laughs> um 
OG Barry and baby Barry have a talk and OG Barry realizes that he's in the past and has created a paradox that allows two versions of himself to exist. This younger version of himself does not have powers, but is set to receive them that day. So OG Barry decides to help recreate the circumstances that got him his powers in the first place, thinking that time is linear. So if baby Barry doesn't get his powers in the past, he will lose his powers in the present. Um, I like this scene because I think this is the beginning of what I was saying about them trying to have their cake and eat it too. A lot of people said that the f- a first introduction of Ezra Miller in the DCU or DCEU was a bit uh, abrasive. Like he, he talked a lot. He was, uh, you know, his jokes were a mile a minute. Some downright called him annoying. So we have now this more poised, more um, mature Barry Allen in contrast to kind of the version that we were introduced to. Yeah. Um, yeah. That was really cool. That was a. Uh, I, th- I it was hella, it was hella meta in my opinion, and I think it worked um, because I think at points you get to experience the joy of origin story through the eyes of somebody who is brand new and kind of a child. Yeah, but get get back to the grounded nature of a more mature hero, and I think it can. It's easy to do both of those in the same film, but by having two Barrys, they were able to do it. So I thought that was pretty cool. Um, what did you think about him not telling him why he was there? It's a, it's a, it's, I mean, I don't know if I would have been able to tell myself. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, uh, mom died. I brought her back. <laughs> don't freak out. Don't freak out. <laughs> <laughs> One of the darker moments that I found myself laughing at is when he is seriously considering punching him in the face. <laughs> like time <I'm> stops. So <laughs> <laughs> How do you have to hit somebody? <laughs> to make He's just somebody. like I could just I could end it all. Here. <laughs> it was just, that was pretty funny. Um, so I had a, I was go gonna say I had a guy. I I'm not gonna say who it is because he's a very we both know him though, and he's okay. like I didn't like the movie. Ezra Miller was annoying, and I just thought like wasn't that the point though? Like yeah, I, like, yeah, yeah. I thought so. I think <laughs> I think I think it's um. I think this is character rehab in a lot of ways. Character and universe rehab in a lot yeah. of ways. It got to set the right tone that they needed with this character and explain why he would be antsy. Before it was just a lot of that for that sake. It felt like, you know, like those were just character ticks because they thought it would make it interesting. And they were able to pare it down to why he's this way and why, you know, um, he's a bit out there. Uh, recently, I had said in the group chat, now people are suggesting that his characterization might be uh, classified as being on the spectrum of sorts. And if there's representation in that, so be it, you know, uh, director's intent and all that. Um, I think there's possibly some proof <laughs> in some of this, the characterization there, but, uh, you know, that's neither here nor there. Um, they go to the research center where Barry is set to be hit by lightning, but OG Barry gets hit with the lightning bolt going through him and hitting baby Barry. Somehow this occurrence gives the younger Barry powers and left the older one powerless. They go to young Barry's apartment and our Barry does his best to warn his variant of using his powers recklessly, but to no avail. Young Barry tries out his powers, sets his clothes on fire, crashes several vehicles, downs a light post, which causes a fire to hit a pile of fireworks, which generates an explosion that cuts the city's power out temporarily. I thought this was just, <laughs> I, I, I enjoyed the shit out of it. First of all, that Same. was great, great stuff. Same. I love yeah. that they made fun of his uh, his his early version of the Flash run. Yeah, uh, with the squeaky they, tiles <laughs> in yeah. the background. <laughs> really, really I, good stuff. I also love the shot of like, him just going out there and then coming back. And like we saw what happened, but then when you pull back and you look at it from the other Barry's perspective, who doesn't know what's going on, it's just, <laughs> yeah, it's a city on fire, and in seconds. Insanity you know, and in seconds. He's immediately, like, I think of like Ezra Miller's reign on uh, terror, reign of terror. Oh, yeah. <laughs> there you go, man. <laughs> Hurricane <laughs> Ezra. <laughs> <laughs> they know about Hurricane Ezra. <laughs> um, I, I like this because, you know, call me corny. I really can't get over like that first amount of pure adulation when somebody gets their powers and they're trying it out i always think that that's super cool you know when toby's doing it and he's go web and all that kind of stuff there like i really like when 
a hero gets their powers and are enjoying it. I think that's part of the the reason why the flight scene is so emotional in um, Man of Steel, you know, because not yeah. only is he doing it, but he's enjoying it. And to see, we, we've we've kind of not seen Barry, into, like even in this film, he's kind of doing stuff, but he's like kind of upset about why he has to do them and et cetera and so forth. Um, it's very rare they were able to see him have fun while doing this kind of stuff. Um, I, I thought, I, I thought I, that this version of Barry like could have possibly been like stronger than <laughs> than the regular one. Yeah, because yeah. like, he was just learning everything so fast, and he's like, "Well, I wouldn't learn this for another few years." So he's affecting himself in a way that would have made him stronger, faster. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, um, because he wouldn't have had somebody to show him the suit or tell him about the you know um, possibly. I, I like to think that uh, I know this has. You when you said he would have had somebody to give him the suit, it it, it reminded me that t- technically, like he, the re- he got the name the Flash from Grant Gustin. I like to think that's still. Canon. Oh yeah, I like to think that still happened because there's no way. Like this is years later, right? This right a year yeah. or so? Is it like two years? Or they did they say however many years it was? But it's been a long time, and I feel like that adventure could have happened. In- well, well, this is um so. It, it it is kind of a weird thing, right? Be, are, the I don't know when the events of Man of Steel happen in their own universe. I don't know if they happened in 2013, because if that's the case, and if this exists in 2023 as released, then he went back 10 years. But it doesn't I feel wanna, that way. Yeah. It feels like shorter? I, I, did they give I mean, a year? In my mind, I was saying like 2013, but that's because the movie came That's out what I'm right saying, now. yeah. I... Yeah. I for some reason believe all of this has happened in five years i, I want to take all the production oh, wait time. we can we can do this right now it, okay. his mother died in 2004 on june 13th my birthday okay okay uh i can that's that's my point in time i can give you that and this is how in the old, film how old was he when she died i want to say like eight is it they eight say or- it too right they, they had to fucking say it. I swear. I think God they said it. Me. God damn. Uh, <laughs> let me see. Uh, let me see if I can find anything. But yeah, I, I was trying to see if they were just going to use the. Um, the. Uh, like kind of what they did with uh, Barry Allen in that instance. I mean, uh, the CW. Oh, I'm trying to come up with a timeline. So. But I guess did he because now he says he arrived on the day that he got his powers, but then the same day is Zod arrives. But like, did he? So in this universe, Zod arrived a couple months earlier, right? Did, did we have to assume that because, uh, in the main universe, it kind of implies that he had some time from when he first got his powers to the day Zod arrived, because he was able to build a little suit, a homemade outfit. Yeah, he like just a didn't week. Know what to do? Roughly, right? Yeah. Yeah, it had to be at least a week. Um, yeah. So yeah, according to them, in November is the events basically the beginning of the events of Man of Steel. December twelfth is when Zod gives his message. Okay, and then in this in the, in the, in Barry's fucked up universe, it happens in, on September whatever the day he got September twenty ninth because I yeah. scoured. I scoured everything looking for what that if that had any significance and I couldn't find anything. Oh, <laughs> That's what I felt like very significant. Yeah. Yeah. I thought maybe it was the day the first issue of the Barry Allen Flash came out, like the Carmine mm-hmm. Infantino version, but no, I guess not. No, it, it's like some volume or something. A day of volume came out. Um Yeah, I was wondering about what that time because I was trying to see what the difference was in between the ages of the flashes, you know, but I, I thought it was like supposed to be like an eighteen twenty five kind of deal. But maybe he has his 30 in this. Who knows? Or Barry's 30 <laughs> in this. Um, uh, oh, that's what I wanted to say. I really, really, really like that they include the physics of phasing in this. Oh, they actually yes. actually showed the uh, physics of phasing. Because I'm so- I got it when they said it in, in, in CW's Flash. And you deal with it enough to understand it. It's but. pulled from the comics. Like the explanation in the comics is that you vibrate your molecules so fast through. that they go through, and they to see them visualize that without words. Yeah, uh, that was really fucking cool. That was like a flash. That was like real flash shit. Yeah, <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. And I don't know if 
there's only one phasing sound, but I did like that it was familiar to the regular flash phasing yeah, sound. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, okay, yeah, I can dig that. I know what that's about. Um, and I, I loved all the hilarity about him, you know, um, phasing through the floor and all that kind of stuff there. So a lot more as naked as Revealer in this than you would think. I will tell you that. Um, so he scolds young Barry about being careless and in the morning shows him how to put on the flash suit so he doesn't ruin any more clothes. They get back in civilians and see a news report showing Zod's ship is in orbit. He gets his famous message from Man of Steel about Earth sheltering a Kryptonian, which reminds Barry of the events of Man of Steel. We find out in this film that Barry was on the ground in Metropolis, having a new, newly acquired his powers, and tried to help, but was discouraged after he was unable to save both a young boy and his father. Using his knowledge of that event, he decides they have to unite the Justice League early so they can stop Zod before Metropolis, or even worse, the world can be destroyed. What do so you think about them tying uh, this back? I did not expect that at all. I was very, I was really pleased with that. That he, uh, they not not only uh, just put him in there. They kind of, it kind of takes that event and shows it from the ground again, which they did with Bruce Wayne already. But I really like that because in Man of Steel, we're really busy with Cal, like and <laughs> like we're doing the fight, or we're busy with Lois, and you can see the people going up and down, and they show like Jenny get trapped under the rebel. But just I really like telling those stories because I fucking love Man of Steel. I like that they made it like this Nexus event. <laughs> For the DC universe, almost. And, and everybody it, was there. So the, you know what the big thing about this is, and it almost feels like weird to say because it's so obvious. Like it's, it should be so plain, but like it's ingenious making it a, a Nexus event because it would have been globally yeah. unavoidable, right? Like. Unlike other things that they do in, in the MCU, or like I said again, helicarriers are falling out of the sky and people can't be bothered, right? Um, or 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 a giant uh, freaking um, celestial is is erupting from the Earth's core and yeah. no one can be bothered. When the world engine starts to terraform and change the gravity of the uni- of the of the exact planet that you're living on, it would make sense that some of these characters would show up into the fold, you know. Uh, I'm still looking at you, Diana. I'm still wondering. Uh, yeah, I was thinking about pa- I was thinking about freaking Patty Jenkins, you freaking <laughs> asshole. I'm still wondering why why your ass wasn't around, you know. But you know, <laughs> to each his own. Um, I, oh, and like, there's been a lot to be said that they have been treating Flash kind of like how Marvel treats Spider Man. Yeah, uh, the first Batman. time I. Yeah, the first time I got that feeling, and not in a bad way, was when they showed like this makeshift suit. Um, yeah. I was like, I was like, you know, I kind of dug it. I, I was like, you know, you would you wouldn't know what would work and what wouldn't, and it kind of makes like it kind of makes the other suit. Considering like like the idea of the Snyder suit being his first suit doesn't make sense to me. That yeah. was my first kind of rub up against. I was like, I don't understand how you arrived to this. But I feel like you would if you started with duct tape and, <laughs> and and bike helmets and stuff, right? Like if you started there, you'd work yourself up to that kind of patchwork kind of deal, and then you know eventually get the uh, cool black and gold stuff or, or red and gold stuff. Um. So Barry looks up Victor Stone, but he is not a cyborg, according to uh, <laughs> Wonder Brothers. <laughs> uh, <laughs> He calls Arthur Curry's dad, but Aquaman was never born. I love seeing Tamora Morrison. Oh, that was so good. Arthur the really, dog. Really yes, Arthur the dog. And that was not the Queen of Atlantis. Or, you know, <laughs> or, you know, <laughs> down there. I'll tell you that. Um, no one has heard of Superman or Wonder Woman either. When Baby Barry's roommates tell him that in this reality, Eric Stoltz played Marty McFly in Back to the Future, Barry starts to panic as he realizes he changed things and uh, now there's no Justice League, a.k.a. no one that could help him against the Kryptonian threat. So then, many so many movie references in this one. Uh, yeah, they so said many, Kevin Bacon's in yeah. Top Gun. I, I know that's the part that popped Tom Cruise. I know it. I know and then the he turned Eric Stoltz thing. And then he just called the he just you know called what? the city and was like, I want to say I want to say something. <laughs> I think that I think that when they watched this version and they saw like the way the CGI was and everything, I think that they thought they were watching an unfinished cut. And they were like, Man, when this is done, 
this is going to be the greatest freaking movie ever. Like, like people are going to love this. And then it just came out like the exact same one. <laughs> the yeah. exact same version they watched. What and he's I- just like, I'm never going <laughs> to call anybody ag- again. I, uh, <laughs> Fuck that. I, uh, w- one of my favorite podcasters had the same, a similar, uh, a similar thought. He's like, this it feels like something you would agree to say that it was the best because you can see where it's going like you yeah. can see you can see what it will what it could be at the end not that it was this when you got it uh, i, I genuinely sense. i genuinely think he meant what he said i just feel like he thought something else. i feel like he thought it wasn't finished i don't think they asked him tom I, could you please say it right this? right i think he meant it <laughs> i think he say <laughs> Is that, it had it had so much uh, like Hollywood little Hollywood references and I mean ultimately it had a cool little story and yeah. even all the it, it, it was almost like it was a celebration of DC but it was also like you have the hundred years of Warner Brothers thing going on and you kind of right. felt a little bit of that in there too and I can see why people like Hollywood people enjoyed it too. But another thing is I remember one big name that also had agreed to to saying that it was pretty good with Stephen King and I thought that that was out of the blue until you remember that Andy Muschietti probably made Stephen King the most money of any director. <laughs> He's like, history. by the way, I love that guy <laughs> and anything he does. What's he uh, doing? Flash movie? Fuck Great. Yeah. <laughs> I love the Flash now. <laughs> like I, I, I've been, I've been a fan of Flash Gordon. I'm telling you for <laughs> so many, <laughs> so many years. Um, and again, I'm not to say I'm not trying to discredit anybody's. Um, you know, opinions. I just thought that was, stuff was funny. Uh, so he finds out that Batman does exist in this universe. So he decides that if anyone could find Superman, it would be him. He and baby Barry had to Wayne Manor to get his help. But when they arrive, it seems abandoned. So they venture into the kitchen where they engage into a fight with a limber and wild haired Bruce Wayne who assaults them for breaking in. <laughs> Uh, Baby Barry is able to use his powers to knock him out, and when everyone calms down, they have a bit of a chat. What did you think of this scene? This scene, the uh, the introduction of the cousin dinner, um, <laughs> and uh, just uh, Michael Keaton, basically. I uh, I thought it was interesting that they had Michael Keaton in like his first scene. He was like uh, his face was basically obs- obscured, like he was covered. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I was like, okay, that's a choice. I never, I um, I like that they committed to what they were doing. Uh, I just thought maybe it might go over some people's heads that it's the, who, what's really happening until he actually puts on the suit. Like they were gonna be in Young Barry's seat. Like well, they're not gonna notice until they go to the back gate. Like, oh, wait a minute, that's Michael Keaton's Batman. Right. Right. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I thought that was cool, but it was a great scene. I like the callback to when he first met Barry. They, it's such a front oh, this that. time. Yes, yes, yes. Um, I so I love Batman Returns. I love Batman eighty nine. I love Michael Keaton in those roles. Um, I did wonder about the physicality of a man his age, but this scene showed that they can have their cake and eat it to it again. Like I said, in a lot of ways, they're able to um, kind of push past the limitations that you would perceive that they would have in situations like this. So I thought it was really, really cool um, to see him be limber in that mode because you would expect Batman to be. It's been years. Um, and But he doesn't have powers. So that should happen to a situation of an old man in the cupboard uh, when he doesn't have any powers. I think that makes a, a lot of sense there. Um, but we'll talk about whether or not he is the actual Bruce in a bit. Um, another thing is, I this is this. There's going to be a sub a subsection of fans that just uh, screams at me for this. And this is a little bit of a tangent, but um, I was born in Brooklyn, <laughs> which and I'm half I'm Puerto Rican. I'm full Puerto Rican, um, which means that majority of the music that I've ever listened to has been rap, reggae, reggaeton, <laughs> bachata, salsa, etc. and so forth. Um, so my rock knowledge is not huge majority of the rock that i know or the knowledge that i have of it now which is bigger than it was when i was a kid is from film wrestling and uh game soundtracks <laughs> like yeah, guitar right heroes guitar heroes and stuff like that right um and 
the song in this scene where they're fighting Bruce is a song that I had just recently heard and I had just recently put in my uh, Spotify. It's 25 or 6 to 4. Um, it's a really high energy, sort of big band, old school kind of hit. And um, so when they walk in and he's playing, I'm like, oh, I got a little markout moment for that. So that was pretty <laughs> cool. Um, but yeah, I liked uh, seeing <laughs> the, the slow motion frying pan. I liked seeing... Um, uh Keaton be so spry be so limber um it kind of reminded me of how we were able to add a layer of physicality to vader post yeah yeah our yeah. first introduction of him are you a fan of that or do you think that that kind of i no i actually make- like i mean because you know it, it kind of reminds me of like playing a <clears throat> playing a Game Boy game as a kid versus playing a PlayStation game now. You, know, you had to okay. use your imagination <laughs> right. a lot more. Side scroller. Could you imagine handing uh, somebody who's only played Mario side scroller like Odyssey? Yeah. Which one of the names? Like, oh my god! What? I could turn around. But I mean, like I, I get it. like I like I really like when they do that. Like they did. You mentioned Vader. Like their original Obi Wan Kenobi and Darth Vader fight was not much. Two no. old men swinging a stick. It right. wasn't anything, right? But someone on YouTube did like the same fight, but with amazing graphics, and I love that. I've seen it. Yeah, I've I love seen that. that. I love stuff like that. So I'm down. I like um when he suits up, and they gave him like a straight up action scene, like a bat action scene. I was like, this is like one of the best Batman fight scenes since uh, the warehouse. That's good. Yeah, that's good stuff. I loved it. Or, totally. I thought um. Like you're saying, uh, it, it's it's better than what I saw. I remember the big joke for a while was there was this scene from, I want to say it was like Taken, one of the Takens, yeah. where Liam Neeson is trying to scale a fence, and uh, <laughs> it's it's like it's like fifty cuts <laughs> of him get, like getting over the fence, you know. I'll get that damn fence. <laughs> I was walking around afterwards looking for if, fences. If you take a to if you I was like, if you take a wide shot, the the the, the gates open on the side. <laughs> just, <laughs> he's just trying. To, he's just struggling over the fence. <laughs> but no, I I I dug it. Um, uh, Barry does his best to explain that he and Bruce, albeit a different Bruce, are friends, but doesn't know how it's possible that there is a different Bruce here. Uh, Bruce explains that time isn't linear, but has fixed points that cause different timelines to intersect. He does an entire demonstration with spaghetti, explaining the multiverse, and then says only an idiot would mess with the space-time continuum, so he, decline, <laughs> he, he declines the invitation to help. I thought that was pretty funny, too. He's like, what? It, it, honestly, it took me a little bit, and maybe after, it took me a little, maybe until after the movie to fully understand that he, like, because I, <laughs> I thought they had removed, like, I was like, oh, they, did, they went back to time travel, they removed the multiverse thing. Right. And it was like, no, it turns out he placed himself on a different strand. Like, I was like, oh, so he's in another universe. Like, he fucked up. Uh, hey, which, okay, which, but I, I didn't get that until after the movie, long right. after the movie was over. <laughs> like, I was like, okay, this spaghetti metaphor is weird. I, 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 which, I, also, oh, he's- <laughs> okay, which also means that this is not definitively the 1989 Batman. No, no, it's a parallel. Right, which is, it's, which is, I think that's pretty and not pretty uh, pretty important to know or note. Yeah, yeah, for sure. But I mean, the idea is that they had similar lives because it's a it's not a very far parallel. That's why it looks like Michael Keaton because they had pretty much uh, the same life minus some differences. A major one being this guy gets a Zod. <laughs> like, is it guy. is it me or does Keaton kind of bring a wild energy to Bruce and Batman? In this? I thought he did. I like an unpredictable did. sort of like but he did I mean, that's just, he he kind of brought a little bit of that energy back in the day too yeah you want to yeah. get nuts the original yeah. the original delivery of that line is a little wild i mean yeah. I don't think he had well, he's holding the fire before. poker yeah. <laughs> you know, let's get nuts the clown guy's like yo what's up with this guy <laughs> this guy's fucking crazy <laughs> <laughs> um so uh young barry oh sorry he declines the invitation yeah so they decide that they're gonna break into the bat cave and use his stuff i think they call it bat shit, right something like that we're gonna use yeah. this bat shit. i'm gonna, gonna use this bat, bat shit. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think about phasing into the <laughs> into the bat cave 
Uh, that was funny. I like that he comes back up like, what the hell? <laughs> what was under there? <laughs> like, what right. did I just see? And I love that uh, this like is that. a proper cave. Like, it, you know, cause as, it, as it was depicted in 89, it's like yeah. just a yeah. cave with a computer somewhere and a, a weird lead design where the car goes. Like, how do you get around to those places? On the, you know, like walking. <laughs> like you got to walk all the way from the back computer to the car. They get all the way to, to the bat wing. Um, so just next people. But it's funny because he used, like I said, he used spaghetti as a metaphor. Uh, you know, multiverse theory is often referred to as string theory, spaghetti string, if you will. Um, so a lot of that stuff uh, is funny. And then I'm just like, he's just eating. He's just eating <laughs> pasta. <laughs> like since Bruce Wayne was making pasta and he used it as a metaphor for the current situation that he's in. But he's just, yeah, he's not really trying to save the world. I think he was barefoot. I'm almost yeah, he's asleep. <laughs> yeah, his slippers were on the ground by themselves. Um, so young Barry is fanboying all over the Batcave and Barry, uh, OG Barry basically chews him out for, um, not taking anything seriously and for taking his family for granted, the family for granted stuff I got when he saw the monkey on the yeah. dartboard, the not taking anything serious to, to me felt like the fans yelling at Ezra Miller. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Like you're not funny. You're not. <laughs> I was like, oh shit. <laughs> they've been reading. My, they've been reading my uh, my group text. <laughs> uh, he's like, you're not funny. You're not this. You're not that. Whatever, whatever. Uh, what do you think about that moment? Um, and how young Barry's kind of like, yo, I don't even want to do this. You're the one who came out of nowhere and gave me these fucking powers. Now we're in the back cave. <laughs> what do you think about Barry versus Barry in that moment? I like that nobody was wrong and nobody was right. Yeah. It's, uh, it's not always easy to do that, but it was a great. I also like this shot. They had this great shot, and it's only for like a split second where they show both of them like on the edge of the cliff in the back cave in a shadow, yeah. and like dark, uh, older Barry's just kind of looming down on the younger one. I was that's really that's really well done. Cinematic, like, yeah, yeah, that's a, yeah. quite a, quite a cinematic shot. Like on the edge, right. he's like almost pushing him over the edge. Yeah, yeah, exactly, um, and. Like you said, no one's really right in this instance, but I think the bigger thing is OG Ezra has nothing to say, OG Barry has nothing to really say because he can't, yeah. he won't confess to why he's there. So unless you're going to confess to why he's there, nothing that you're saying about taking family for granted makes any sense. You know, he would have to say, I've lived without my family for this long. That's why I feel the way that I feel. Um, because I often think about like, oh, the life of Barry Allen must have sucked without his mom. And I often forget that his dad wasn't there either. Yeah. Um, so, you know, not having either one of them around, obviously is taking a toll. Uh, so Barry pleads with Bruce one more time. And this time Wayne accepts the call to action and suits up. Um, he, he does this by like kind of invoking Alfred. Uh, we were talking about Michael go possibly being a Nexus <laughs> being, <laughs> cause he, he was a, he was an Alfred to uh, three different Batman, possibly yeah. in three different yeah. universe, possibly. I, I can look at it like. The, like I like the way comics have explained it recently, where it's like the closer some universes are to each other, the more similarities they have. Yes. Like the further the further out, the more difference. Like that's when you'll start seeing like, oh, in this universe, I am a woman. That right. is strange. <laughs> like in this well, that's what the Earth Two of it Asian. all was, right? Like yeah. the Earth Two is supposed to be like the closest in proximity, therefore the changes yeah. are not really big. So, so I feel like the Michael Go. Uh, of it all, it's like there's those Batman that 1989 and 94, what is it, 96 and then 98 or something? Yeah, I feel like those are. I guess we're gonna officially accept those as different universes now. Three, would you say, or do you think the Clooney the, and the Kilmer are one? I think the Clooney and the Kilmer one might as well have them separate. I mean, at this point, yeah. I there's no reason in the world. I guess the only tie is uh, what's his face, uh, uh, Chris O'Donnell, but again, yeah, there could be two to Chris O'Donnell's. Yep, yep. That makes it really easy to accept in my head. I was like, yeah. Like, okay. It yeah. doesn't like you get the brand movies, they are there, and these movies are their own thing. You know, and, and it they, doesn't mean and it doesn't mean that Clooney didn't fight the Joker or didn't yeah. fight, you yeah. know, uh the penguin. He just would have done it in his own way in his own time, possibly even identically until yeah. a certain yeah, yeah. point, you know? Yep, yep. Multiverse is fun. I know. I know. Movie people are like, "Oh, I'm so sick of it." It's every movie. But I've been. I've just. We just had. We've had it for so long. 
Yeah. <laughs> like, we've played with this thing. It's like, oh, okay, this is fun to see it on screen. I like all the different ways we're doing this. Yeah, and it just uh, it just spells out all the possibilities. I think I mean, it just it rewards you for it, it. It's kind of rewarding you and saying everything that you've ever watched mattered, which is always important, right? <laughs> you don't you don't want to ever feel I, like it some people time. some people do it better than others. Unfortunately, I, I, agreed. Agreed. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> looking at you, uh, Doctor Strange. <laughs> oh dear. Uh, uh, Doctor Strange in the lobby of madness. <laughs> he went to like one. <laughs> he went to one Earth. <laughs> For a little He's bit. Like multiverse. Uh, <laughs> other other verse. It should have been Doctor Strange in the other verse. Other, other verse. Madness. <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, so they oh Bruce gives them intel that an unidentified person was taken to Siberia after being found in a spacecraft and agrees to use the Batwing to fly them there. Uh, they break in and go to save who they believe is Superman, only to find a malnourished and weak young woman inside. You've seen this film twice. Is the suit in there? Uh yes, yes it is. Okay. They look over it. They look over it twice, I think. Once they kind of to show that there is a super person here. Yeah. They look at it and then when they're leaving, um Barry grabs it. He picks it up and takes it with Okay. Him. Okay, cuz I remember when it's on the dinner table and I was like, "Where did that?" <laughs> must have, must have been. I was like, "That seems really strange." Um because he gets Clark gets his suit from the ship yes he goes to is get it? his suit from the from no no he gets his suit from the ship that's been there for twenty thousand years right oh the old 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 uh kryptonian yeah whatever yeah because yeah. he it, puts because when he puts his father's uh chip in it the ship makes him an outfit like the fortress that would have been his fortress at the time yeah uh, yeah. yeah okay um bu- 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 bu. what do you think about this inclusion of supergirl we'll talk a bit more you know when she's doing her her stuff but um you know this is obviously there's always been a supergirl you know uh in canon uh the cousin of cal l who was sent there to help him protect him in route to earth and protect him while he was on earth and then somehow some way they get separated and um she eventually comes later on down the line but this is also a callback to snyder again with this idea that there was a pod seemingly open in Clark's ship. Um, and this kind of ties into a universe in which we could have kind of seen that Supergirl. What do you think about the idea of this being like Cavill Supergirl, the the, the Snyder Supergirl? The, I would have um, liked that. In another yeah. universe, I would have liked to do laundry and taxes with her. <laughs> I don't <blame> you. <laughs> no no seriously i would have liked it I, I, not bad i think she even matches his like his aesthetic like hey, yeah because like we're fucking going through it bro <laughs> <laughs> i don't know i liked it i thought it was a little bit of a commentary on how dark he was uh yeah initially yeah. <laughs> I, I mean she was quick the- she was quick to yeah <laughs> and this, and this, i like how she went through the same um she went through the same crisis uh but very fast she was like oh man you can suck <laughs> suck and then she was like five minutes later she went through the whole arc you know what not as bad as those guys yeah. <laughs> oh i'm dead <laughs> It's a full oh, circle, bro. It's a full oh, circle. This world sucks. I died saving humans that are going to die anyway. This is fantastic. This world sucks. This is the worst fucking world <laughs> Barry could have landed in. And what kind uh, of fate is that? Absolutely. <laughs> absolutely ridiculous. I did get that flashpoint feel at the end of this field, at the end of this that I think you're supposed to feel of like, oh, this is a garbage universe. Like this is yeah. not gonna <laughs> <laughs> I definitely got the feel like, oh, this is just this there's no saving. Uh, this is this place is universe. trash. Yeah, oh, we shit. need to get out of here. There's no <laughs> we need to just leave because there's no like, there's no you're here. I like that Bruce asks him why. Like why are you staying here? Like we figured out that this is not your universe. Why why are you helping us? This is yeah. waste of your this is a waste of your time. <laughs> you can just go. So um, my mom's still alive. Uh, not for long. Okay. No, no. <laughs> I I love, like you said, you know, when they're breaking into the Siberian place. Um, Batman is just on it. 
You know, old yeah. man Batman is just on it. He's uh, grappling, hooking people, clotheslining people. He's doing all the cool uh, modern fight styles and stuff. I thought that was really, really cool. Um, I love that we're using like tech, but then we're using like old tech too. Like he uses like some old, yeah. like a flip phone to try to hack into the. <laughs> that <laughs> was funny because if they, it wasn't like it was like the one situation like he wasn't prepared for. Like time right. passed him by. It happened. It really happened. He really got passed by because Barry had to do that for him. He didn't fix that himself. That should have been the first indication that something was off. Right, about right. this universe yes hold on no batman don't got a fucking contingency plan for the passage of time no, does. No. i also want to watch the cut where there's no speedsters and they have to wait for him to <laughs> okay that one's wrong they're coming I'm, I'm trying i'm trying as fast as i can damn it i have no outfit <laughs> so that's Spartanic. true I, I, how do you spell Spudnik? Yeah. Is that a C or a K? Damn it. <laughs> uh. Um, that and then come on, man. The ruler. The ruler. Oh, the dick it. joke. I was like, that is so weird and out of place. <laughs> bad it dick. came out of nowhere. Uh bad dick and the ruler. Uh how much do you weigh? I loved all that. How um, many inches? <laughs> I think it was about seven. I think I think a man's flying average. But he might have been, Not, you know. Posture, posturing for the he might have been posturing <laughs> for the company the Not recent bad. company the, he, he, he went around he was like fuck there's two speedsters <laughs> oh there's one speedster and this superpower woman uh hey look at this just, want, just wanted y'all to know just in case <laughs> yeah. you thought by, by the way and i'm the one with the plane <laughs> by the way just wanna... <laughs> <laughs> i'm rich and i'm packing yeah seven inches that. <laughs> six and a half <laughs> um um i love that barry just gets shot in the leg <laughs> it's another <laughs> flashpoint thing where his leg you know they like break his leg at one point or whatever he's like limping to the finish line um so I love that. he's like i didn't know we could get shot he's like yeah <laughs> he told <it> again <laughs> what uh, made you think that we, that we couldn't <laughs> <laughs> i love um wait that's bruce, bruce wayne is batman what did you think we were doing here <laughs> I loved all the times that old Barry was like, bro, like he's you're not even paying attention. A, he's basically a stoner, him and all his friends. I was wondering why, like, are we not at a place where you can go all the way? Because PG thirteen, right? Is that a PG thirteen film? Um, I mean, yeah, it is. They would, the they would have, been, they would have, they would have totally been stoners. And also, she woke up all hungry, like, oh man, did they oh, not yeah, have yeah. that whole night scene in that place? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It wasn't the they same. Were just, they apartment. were just knocked out. Uh, everybody was asleep. <laughs> oh, okay. Hi. Okay. Hi. They were right. on a cloud. All right. Those are two different movies. <laughs> he said, uh, <laughs> fuck it. Well, we got to put the, the, the people in there. Okay. Yeah. One of them was Patty Spivet, I think. Yeah. Patty it, and Albert. Uh, I don't know Albert. Albert. Yeah. Yeah. That's, um, Malfoy oh, from the CW show. Freaking, uh, the alchemist. I think his name is Julian. Julian something. But he's got a name, right? He's got like a villain name. Yeah, I think Doctor Alchemy was his name in Doctor uh, Alchemy. There you go. Yeah, That's Doctor yeah, yeah. Alchemy, and they they had him as a little comedy character in a, at the job. And then some weird dude spreading they his legs on the couch. Too. They were like, those are oh, really not friends. Like, like strangely antagonistic. I was like, why are these guys so mad? Yeah, like, why are they such dicks? This is not cool like, at oh, all. Barry cares about law and order. <laughs> Oh yeah! Look at you. You care about people. You piece of shit. Look at you, loser. Uh, oh, he doesn't want to block people away without probable look, cause. They, they bring him outside to watch the justice system be garbage, and they laugh at him. Like, the day ah. before his father's appeal. Look the at day that. Before his father's appeal. What assholes, man! You don't need <laughs> like that. Uh, uh, so they get to the surface, but they are outnumbered. Luckily for them, they just rescued a Kryptonian who soaks up enough delicious sunlight to gain a bit of her powers back. Almost on Batman's cue, the Kryptonian helps take out the Siberian guards that kept her prisoner, although she faints from exhaustion soon after. Um, so this is the part where I would ask you, how do you feel about Sasha Kaye? I love her in this movie, actually. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, I might have been... Uh, <laughs> maybe <Blinded. it's> because... <laughs> Maybe I was blinded, but no, no, right, for right. real. She was just a great character. I wish we could have seen more of her. And there's one thing that the DC that the DC universe did perfectly. It was introducing awesome women characters and having them in there for like ten minutes. 
Yeah, <laughs> like yeah. they did it with Black Canary. They yeah, did yeah, it with right. Wonder Woman and Batman v Superman. They did it with freaking Supergirl now. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I think that she brings a lot to the table. They were talking a lot about how um, they made the suit was supposed to be like androgynous, like it wasn't supposed to be like female made. Like, nah, that's a waste. She should have had on. She sh- like, I don't. Okay, getting rid of the skirt, fine. I understand that, right? Skirt is like really nineteen fifties. Like, uh, super girl, so she wears a skirt. I get that. Yeah, but the long, stupid blue, like there was no color. Oh, no I was thinking print. about that, and I had to think seriously for a second. I thought. Cavill not have red boots? It's like yeah, Cavill red boots. did have. I eventually figured that out, but I was in the theater going, that feels weird. It feels like they it feels like she was in all red and then they dipped her <laughs> like yeah. half of her in blue. I think I watched too much fashion shit with my mom because I was looking at her like, ew, like the outfit is ew. Like, why yeah. would they dress you like that? This, sweetie? Completely so classes. this is not flattering for you or your figure. You know what if, <laughs> you know what would have looked real good? Thigh high boots. Hey, <laughs> I'm man. Just saying. Thigh high um, red boots. Hey. Come on. What the hey. fuck? <laughs> I'm not saying she had to be like in a skirt. I don't want to see her ass. I'm just saying she could look better. <laughs> like, yeah, it could have yeah. been a better suit. They gave yeah. her a garbage suit. I thought. Um, yeah, it's supposedly that was on purpose. It's supposed to be a suit that a man or a woman could wear. Sure. Um, sure. I mean, it, technically, so then technically, cow suit from Man of Steel was androgynous. Like, she could have just wore that. You could have just gave yeah. her that. Yeah. Well, just a little bit weird with the abs, but. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, she's, she's, got abs. she's got real abs. She got real. I think abs. they all had abs. I think Barry even had hard plastic abs. Oh, they, they always do that stupid mold, the abs mold. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No nipples though. Still, no we, nipples. The waist. Uh, dun dun dun. <laughs> yet. <laughs> no nipples. Yeah. Yeah. Yet. yet. <laughs> Dear reader. <laughs> so. Uh, they all head back to Wayne Manor, where Bruce stitches himself up, and my man smiles a little bit in the mirror, man. I don't know if it, that's what it was, but that's what it I got was. from it. That's how I took it. I took it like he was like, oh, I'm back. That felt like, like Dark it. Knight Returns. Like, yeah. And I was like, he's, wow. He's and stitching then for a second, the, blood, the wounds, and he's just like, yeah, this is great. This for a second, drugs. I go, that, like, I could see Batman Beyond, and then I got sad. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. Oh. yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> That was a, when he was talking to Barry in the in the cave. I thought that that came to me like, wow, look at that Batman Beyond movie that we're never going to get. I look hate at that Batman this. Beyond hair from New Ezra, right? Oh, like he's got man. he's rocking the Terry McGinnis, <laughs> and they're just sitting there chatting. We got fucking like, robbed. We got right? robbed for real. Ridiculous. Because I, I, I mean, <laughs> I know we can't make a Batman Beyond movie now. Anyway, they had the Batman over here, the what they're calling a crime saga now. Epic crime saga, the Batman right. universe, dun, 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 and then the Brave and the Bold. And I guess if you do another one, people the are Penguin start is coming shit. out, <laughs> right? The Penguin, right? Rated R, right? Penguin. That was the television TV, show, TVMA. Yeah, I believe so. Yeah. So what does that say for the next Batman? I'm, I, I'm saying ramp it up. Rated still, R, we, right? We still got robbed of that GCPD uh, show that we're supposed to get. Was the first one PG thirteen? I want to say I'm trying to think of what would have been crazy was, about that. I think it would have been a big deal if it was rated R. I think people would have been like, "Oh wow, rated R Batman movie." The Batman was rated. Had to be PG thirteen. Why can I? This should be like heavily, like easily found, right? The hell, I'm almost certain it's PG thirteen. Yeah, yeah, um, it had to be. I but but see, with them going rated R on the Penguin, I mean. I'm just saying, maybe that means they're willing to take the risk because they're 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 labeling it an epic crime saga. Now. I think they're through trying to sell it to children. I, I think mean, they're good not selling it to children so long as they can sell this mainline <laughs> stuff to them. Yeah, yeah, right? exactly. Yeah, so yeah, this is like uh, the Batman is like Batman After Dark. You know, you can watch your MTV yeah. and then you just this MTV Uncut Batman. or BT Uncut. You know, like this, this is, is Batman for your dad that falls asleep on the couch. Yeah, yeah, so this is a Batman who's got Zoe Kravitz in the Batmobile, you know, <laughs> off, off a shooting schedule. <laughs> <laughs> he found about he found out about that uh, Spider Man chemistry. He found out how to get it. <laughs> um, so the unidentified Kryptonian introduces herself as Kara Zor El, Cal El's cousin. I like the little joke of uh, young Barry being like, "I thought you said Clark was Superman." 
<laughs> you know, like, well, it's Clark and it is Kal-El and it is Superman. Like, it's all three. It's all three of the names. She's like, who's Clark? And he's like, who's Kal-El? Yeah, like, oh, yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> it's like, long story. Um, so, yeah, they sent her to protect him when he was sent to Earth shortly before the destruction of Krypton. She sees Zod on the news and realizes that he that the threat is at hand. So she suits up, absorbs some rays and kind of takes off after telling uh, baby Barry that um, he does not. She doesn't like humans. She's like, man, I mean, it's an understandable reaction, at least. It would have been a little... Oh, 100%. Like, it, it, it's been like an hour. It's been like an hour since she was in prison. <laughs> there, so. apparently, I guess, in that in the original version, or not original, but there's a version of the movie where she comes out and she goes like, Homelander on those Russians. Oh, yeah, I can see that. And they were like, ah. Uh. <laughs> I was also kind of worrying if they were going to do the um, last minute uh captain marvel at endgame scenario oh, no you know no. I, I hope, i'm glad you because that's back. what happens in the comic right superman shows up like at the very last minute or yeah does that yeah not happen? he disappears and then he comes back but he's still like skinny superman i was about to say helps. what happens to him in that Did he, he die he, no i think they all died well Everybody yeah they dies. all die because of the bomb um, yeah but i can't I remember think... what happens after he shows up in the third act john <laughs> cena style I can't remember I think, if he just like. I think he just helps, and then, you know, the world dies, and he can't do anything about it. Oh, poor thing. <laughs> poor thing. Um, so frustrated, OG Barry begs Bruce to help him recreate the circumstances that gave him his powers. This is when he tells him about, you know, he came there because of his um, his mom. And I love, I love this scene because I love it in the comics. I love that they almost kill Barry. Because this is yeah. a ridiculous idea on the face of it. Yeah. And thus should suffer ridiculous consequences. <laughs> so I, I thought, it was, that I thought it was hilarious that she just did it. She didn't yeah. really question it. And because it doesn't work. Like no. she, comes, she comes and she just takes him to get hit by lightning without question. Like, there, okay. There's a version of that where, you know, because he... he um, uh, you know, she, like you said, um, they almost come in the process. Supergirl returns, flies him higher towards the lightning, allowing Barry to be struck. And this time it works. There's another scene in which he doesn't heal and she just fly, like floats <laughs> away. <laughs> I've done all I can here. Because <laughs> he doesn't, re it doesn't react for some reason until he gets touched by young Barry. Like who yeah. has the speed force. You so, know why, like, right? <laughs> there's a version or for real where she just has to like awkwardly. But you know oh. why? You know why he came back to life, right? <laughs> no, we are the Flash, bro. Oh no, don't say <laughs> we that. are the Flash. All you gotta do is touch fingers. They're each oh, other's lightning man. rod, bro. That all right? That's really bad. That's really <laughs> self-absorbed. Who's your lightning rod in this universe? Myself. I ain't got nobody I else. Bro, at, one point we, at one point, young Barry, you know, in a different context, goes, I am the Flash. And I was like, oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I dig it. No more we. I, I, I thought I, that I, was. <laughs> I actually <laughs> love that scene. Yeah. Uh, I am the Flash. <laughs> that's 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 real good. Yeah. I was like, um, yeah. I was like yep. <laughs> yes. <laughs> You're right. You're absolutely right, sir. <laughs> Um, with two flashes on the team, young Barry makes a makeshift flash suit from an old bat suit, and Supergirl joins the fight as gratitude for being saved in the first place. I love the little speech about like this means hope and Zod's not my people. Yeah, like that guy? Yeah, really nah, I'll fuck with that. <laughs> I was like, okay, yeah. So, so um, she went through the whole Henry Cavill arc, but in like five minutes. She was like, yeah. I don't need the time. I'm a little bit more put together than my cousin was. <laughs> and and maybe even a bit of a, like, she was set up in a better scenario to handle that situation. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Because Clark had to come out of hiding, whereas she didn't really care, what, you know, like, what the hell it was. I, I will kill all of them. Yes. Everyone. Every one. <laughs> Everyone. <laughs> uh, Young Barry makes a makeshift suit, like we were talking about. Um, Batman is in, what? <laughs> uh oh batman is the final piece i thought it said batman is in the final piece i'm like is he dead <laughs> i i like i always like the makeshift suit even when they showed it in the um in the promotional material i, I almost wish i didn't see it in the promotional material yeah 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 they wasted that they spoiled that for sure like that was a waste of time because uh, i couldn't make heads or tails of it at first until somebody pointed out that it was a bat suit it looked just looked weird 
you know um he's got a thick neck uh, the great joke about the um because it's supposed to be the suit from um returns right returns so yeah. there's that legend about you know you can't turn the neck so right. he he does the he turns his head and he can't i love it yeah he goes out. to talk to barry sitting next to him and the the cow doesn't move hilarious that definitely yeah, got like i said there's some moments that things happen and i'm just like okay i i got that that was supposed to be funny and then this it happened felt like up. it felt like a, that's why that's what things like that made it feel like a love letter to like dc film like uh like specifically dc movies like more yeah. than anything like uh, like these are callbacks and not just movies but like dc movie legends like people the stuff that people know people don't even know about I, the th cow. Th things things people have been talking about for years yeah, things that look nerds like us are talking about. Like, I love it. I, I, yeah. I don't know. That's cool stuff. No, totally. Um, and yeah, like it, it instantly works as a joke because everyone understands the context in which that was uh played out there. I also think he did it for a pretty good job. And the, I love the comedic effect of like, you know, spraying. They're like playing cool music, and he's spraying the thing. He's putting the lightning bolt on, etc. And then it just cuts the music out as he's cutting the ears off. It's just an awkward. <laughs> <laughs> and that, that was really good um so they get there and uh I, what do you think about michael shannon in this i thought he was fine but i didn't feel like they gave him much to do that's how he felt it, it, has he said that yeah he said that it wasn't as satisfying as man of steel because man of steel you studied the character where um here he felt like it was just sounded like playing with action figures he said he felt uh, that way about a lot of the multiverse movies these days and i was like that's understandable yeah um and then people laughed at him like oh but man of steel and i'm like i, I mean I, I see what he's saying <laughs> like, yeah, listen like, listen you could talk uh i i've talked for hours about man of steel uh, michael shannon is nowhere near the problem with that neither is the characterization of zod it's probably one of the most saving factors of that film so yeah. if you if he went in and was like wow what a character what lines what what um what a pathos for that character and then came in not to flash first but to bvs right and yeah. like yep yeah. You're a fish person. You're a half. You're a half. <laughs> you're dead. <laughs> yeah, you're, uh, you're gonna you're gonna dead. take your body and dunk you in some water, and then you're gonna become like this weird gooey turtle man thing. At uh, least, at, at least at that point, he's like, okay, but it's my guy. You know, right, like he, right. he wrote he wrote all this stuff. Now I, he's like, ah, I was an action figure. It was a toy. But honestly, I don't know what he expected because <laughs> you know what he expected. He's like, I can't wait to do the where did you grow up line. And like, oh, we're not. Shannon, we're not doing this. <laughs> what do you mean? You have <laughs> three lines. <laughs> you have three lines in this movie, and I think you've said most of them before. <laughs> if I can just give me and a moment. And to here. be fair, we already have it recorded, so we don't necessarily need you to do it again. You can so, come, or you could be. Uh, I know you're missing your family's Christmas, but. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, so. Um, during the battle with Zod, Carver learns that Zod intercepted an infant Cal Els escape pod. Oh man! And killed him during a failed attempt to receive the Codex needed to uh, remake Earth into Krypton. What did you think about that? That was a bit dark, I right? I thought that was dark because it was originally meant to get rid of Clark completely yeah. from the universe. Right. I was like, that's how you were going to do it. You people are sick. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, you mean, yes, because this universe was supposed to end when Barry finished his adventures in this. There would have been no Superman. Yeah, and it would have been her. Yeah, Supergirl would have been the straight. That that's that's literally strangling a baby. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like killing it in the crib. This it, that's like that's a that's a that's a turn I of phrase. Like they, they would have been attacking that fan base directly. I think. You thought they were mad. Literally smothering now. the baby of the idea of Henry Cavill <laughs> <laughs> in the DCU. Absolutely ridiculous. You thought um, they were I, mad now, right? Uh, you got me mad now. <laughs> uh, in turns, uh, it turns out in this reality, the Codex is actually inside Kara. Yeah. Um, the two fight with Zod overpowering and eventually stabbing Kara and obtaining the codex from her blood. I love how it's like a little machine you just put over the stomach, <laughs> just extract the codex. Um, and it seems like he made the hole with his, with, when he stabbed her. 
Yeah, 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 <laughs> exactly. Uh huh. There you go. I'm I like, made oh, now, now you're a Capri Sun. Now I just gotta stick my straw, <laughs> <laughs> pull out all the juice, and we're Ouch. done. <laughs> I didn't. I didn't think she was dead. <laughs> for a second i was like i mean really? this one can one live post codex rule? but then he did the co- I, yeah oh, yeah, yeah after i was like i don't know <laughs> but then he confirmed like oh she's dead i was like oh shit yeah there goes yeah. time travel that was that was uh, rather quick and that was the heavy machinery of the team <laughs> like that was the, <laughs> that was the one that's supposed to got the heavy machinery um, kamikaze bruce yeah, young Barry scar- is scarred in battle, and Batman dies by flying his ship directly into Zod's in hopes of taking it out. Uh, He's like, I'm re- sorry. <laughs> <laughs> realizing their failure has gotten everyone killed, young Barry suggests going back in time and starting the fight over, which OG Barry is initially against, but it's too late. Uh, they get another try at things, but Supergirl and Batman are killed again. Batman this time gets a bit of a send-off. What do you think about the whole... I'm trying to save you. Like- You're a dead kid. I like the little uh the sad version of his theme song, the slow yeah. Yeah. fade away. Um I thought I thought it was crazy that they like killed him because I know originally they were supposed to he was supposed to show up like fine. Yeah. At the end, but now he doesn't. So it's like <laughs> like you really killed him. Holy right. Shit. Okay. Oh, okay. <laughs> like that's, that's and again wild. I love the meta like just just let me go, kid. Like <laughs> Yeah, there's no more i got no more yeah i got no more left just let please me go. if i have to do one more reshoot <laughs> i will die is this the vulture <laughs> thing or is this the batman thing <laughs> what am i supposed to be saying in this moment <laughs> who am i talking to uh, <laughs> <laughs> so um yeah uh, so young barry gets increasingly more frustrated and travels again and again back in time in hopes of saving his friends each time he becomes more disfigured from battle and his messing with the time starts to unravel the multiverse itself causing it to crash into itself i thought this scene was very well acted oh yeah i uh, from both ends like both yes. versions of what he was doing that, i that absolutely thing. loved ezra playing young frantic i can save this barry that tracked for me like his insistence that he can do it and like you just one more time just one more time um that really worked and you almost got the effects you you're you're old barry right you're like no stop and before he can even say stop he's not yeah. only gone but he's come back <laughs> right <laughs> and then you go to say something else and he's gone again and i'm just like oh this is not good um but once he got that first kryptonian piece of shrapnel I already started to kind of put the two and two together that he was going to be uh, revealed yep. to be the Dark Flash. It was that, and then the the Scar? the the desperation to to fix things. I was like, yes. "Oh, I see where this is going." I didn't think they were going to go full Savitar uh, or, or full uh, <laughs> Doctor Strange. What if, right? Like, yeah. just I'm going to I'm going to fix this and become more monstrous as I as I continue this uh, transformation, but um yeah i really really loved it and i love that you know he eventually like stops him and he's like no bro we got to stop this you can't i have to go back and allow mom to die and i think he said something like bullshit like just like, straight up like yeah yeah like they use that word a, they use the word shit a lot i was like they use the word shit like 26 times somebody's gonna make it like a shit count <laughs> i think a shit, a count, shit count a shit this count because they use the word shit they used it in spanish they use it in english they used it so much i was like okay I thought they uh I thought it was very, very cool. Um or I think I just thought it was very it was done very well, the betrayal yeah. that young Barry felt in that moment. Like you're gonna let our mom like what? Like at first he's like I, kinda not believing it, and then when he sees that he's serious about it, he like dead ass like bullshit, you ain't finna do nothing. Like we finna like what are we about to do right now? And I was like I love that he's oh. like, Man, I was <laughs> I was doing my laundry. Yeah, I was like, chilling when you showed damn. up. Yeah. Damn. yeah. <laughs> what the fuck you mean? Yeah. <laughs> Yep, uh, but it, I, it's it's also kind of wild to me. Like, if you if you if you take if you were to say like, okay, this is Keaton's universe. This is the one. Like his. Yeah. You mean to tell me that his universe is fated to? <laughs> that's the fate of his yeah. universe. That's the unescapable fate of Michael Keaton's Earth. Holy right. shit! Like he's gonna die. Yeah. They're all gonna die. Like all the humans are gonna die. Like this universe's Earth is done. That's it's gone. Fate. That's, really <laughs> that's gone. wild to me. That's why like, I'm like, there's just no way. Did Max Shrek <laughs> die? 
Oh yeah, he got electrocuted, <laughs> so he's he's fine. Um, yeah. uh, <laughs> the Batman, Bruce Wayne. <laughs> Why are you dressed like the Batman? Because he is the Batman, you idiot. It's my favorite line. <laughs> Batman Returns. Michelle Pfeiffer's dead, bro. Now she's over banging uh, Hank Pym somewhere. So I, I would like to think that he also got to marry her, <laughs> just because. Yeah. And then she died. It's been a couple of years, yeah. A couple it's years. been a long time. Drew High's just, gone wrong. Just to keep things, uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> together. Yeah, I, I like the, I like the fantasy booking, bro. Um, so eventually, the Dark Speedster, who originally knocked Barry out of the Speed Force, returns, and it is revealed to be an older version of the 2013 Barry, who still believes he can save the world from Zod and prevent the deaths of Bruce and Kara. Um, he explains the casual loop paradox that led to his own creation, but grows angry when Barry reveals his own intentions to reverse his actions by letting Nora die. So now they're both mad because first it was young Barry mad. Now dark fast. Oh no, fuck this. Um, uh, yep. Um, what was that? They, no, cause I, <laughs> cause I, I, I remember him doing like a weird purple energy sort of like charge up thingy. That he was doing because he was rocking a lot of purple energy at the time. Um, and he goes to Barry uh employs Dark Speed the Dark Speedster to stop, you know, doing what he's doing because then we start to see as they argue that the multiverse is crashing around them. This is when we get a peek at the different multiverses. So I will uh start and stop at each one, and we'll talk a little bit about so George Reeves and uh Jay Garrick. In the first universe, seemingly the golden age of DC. I had a I I thought that was really cool. I'm like a I I I mean like the DC fan of me. I was like, man, it's really cool. It's George Reeves, golden age, like original black and white. And they gave him a Jay Garrick in the middle of the dome. Like, how cool is that? Uh, yeah. But there was probably like there are people that had a big issue with the, with this particular cameo. A similar, I saw somebody get very upset because of the idea that, you know, um, George Reeves killed himself. Right? Yeah. So because uh, he apparently thought like he would never be seen as more than Superman, but I don't know how true that is. Right. So I, I know like he had, I know he had failure. Like he was having kind of a slumping career at the end of it. I haven't seen Hollywood land, which I think is what the, the film that Ben yeah. Affleck actually yeah. plays him in that explores, uh, po you know, how he had to deal with life post being Superman. Um, I, I thought the Jay Garrick thing was cute, but people immediately started to say that it was Teddy Sears. And then I was like, that's, that's kind of cool, but also kind of weird that they would bring him in for this when yeah. they brought no one else in <laughs> like no one else. I never John Wesley ship nobody else I don't think I ever thought it was a CW flash I thought I mean I was mostly bothered by the entire like <laughs> they ignored the entire Arrowverse yeah um but I guess the idea was that it's just no man but it's bullshit because I was gonna say it's just film but it's like no man they had Batman 66 in there and at one point Wonder Woman so yeah like, I guess it's like two were. different uh, maybe maybe there's a, a source wall, bro. You know, separating the ah. two. <laughs> maybe it's something separating it's, these two. Uh, it's the same of multiverse too. Like they really established that shit full on at one point. Yeah. Like I'm just gonna keep it that way in my head. Like, well, because yeah. I, I was trying, I was really trying to keep this in the same continuity as the DC and trying to like figure out like that one of these Earths is one of the Earths that was left over post crisis in uh, the CW. You know. Uh, but that's when I asked earlier off air if there was a lot of film in our CW crisis. And that's when you alluded to uh, Brandon Ralph, not only Brandon Ralph from Returns, but possibly even playing a Chris Reeves version. Yeah, because if Superman Returns is meant to be the Christopher Reeves Superman, which I mean, I think it is. I don't think yeah. there's anything that goes against that. Then it would be that that Brandon Ralph is Christopher Reeves, but like. I guess in this multiverse, this could just be the universe next to it, right? Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah. That's very, why it looks yeah. weird. Yeah, very, very <laughs> cool. Yeah, yeah. Um, oh, and that's another thing. As we're watching this, this is all done in by choice CGI. Um, Polar Express X <laughs> CGI. Um, it was worse. It was worse the first time I saw it, I think. Uh, yeah. It was it's worse. Cause you know, was it's because you know what to expect that and i mean even when i was watching the movie it was worse like when i saw 
when he first went back in time and they were going by the Justice League uh movie and they okay. showed Henry Cavill as like a CGI statue. I well, know that, <laughs> that I mean we we already have a like a Pavlovian response to seeing bad CGI with Henry Cavill, right? Like that's already like a oh no, no. Oh god. <laughs> I and remember so by the end of it. No. I was like, okay, this already isn't as bad as I thought it was in the beginning with the baby suit. Mm -hmm. And the second time I saw it, maybe because I already was expecting it, it just wasn't that bad at all. (laughs) Even my kid, who I warned, I was like, yeah, all right. He was like, is it good? And I was like, it was good. It's just the CGI was a little weird. And I was like, it looked like a video game. He was like, well, PS4 or 5? Game Boy. Atari. There you go, right? No, I I said PS4. And then he was like, oh, boy. Uh, but afterwards, he was like, man, it wasn't that bad. I was like, you're right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. Um, so after that, we get what's possibly like the, the other, you know, uh, collar pulling uh, yeah. <laughs> cameo, Christopher Reeves and Helen Slater. This only reason why it felt weird is because I know Helen Slater is alive. So that, yeah. we hadn't get into we hadn't she, gotten to any other but any other people that were alive yet in this in this uh, multiverse thing. So I'm looking filmed, at. Do you think she filmed that or like? I don't get know. I, I I think it would have looked a little bit better if she filmed it. In my opinion, because you know, I mean, like, I'm saying like we got Nicolas Cage and yeah. he filmed that. Yeah. And his yeah. looked pretty much on par with theirs. <laughs> I love how he's a multiversal superhero now. He's a multiversal Spider Man. He's a multiversal Superman. <laughs> I, possibly the only person to ever be both. Robbed him of. Has anyone ever been both? Superman and Spider Man? No. No, that's oh definitely God. never been a thing. My God. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, yeah. So, what do, you, what, do you, what do you sit on this? What do you sit on the Christopher Reeves, Helen Slater of it all? I thought it was cool. I thought the whole yeah. multiverse thing was cool. I don't think I had an issue with any of it. I wanted more. I thought they should. Well, be I guess more the question I want to ask is: been, What do you think about them being aware to? I guess the most. That was right? also that, moment, that was also really cool. I think that's why they didn't use stock footage because they wanted it to be like they're oh, they're looking down at Barry and Barry's looking at them and they're like help. <laughs> yeah, you're fucking this up. But <laughs> <laughs> what do you think that Flash was doing? I was wondering this. <laughs> what was he up to? He's like, I gotta save my grandma. <laughs> shit is going on over here. Okay, don't even bother us. <laughs> I think he was trying to save his universe. I think yeah, I think they're because they were aware he was probably cool. trying to save his universe. That's, That's just cool. my head canon. Um, um we, we brushed past a little bit of Adam West Batman. Um Oh, I want to say real quick before we get to anything else. I like the little joke of Barry finding the Joker little bag. That the laughs. Bag. Yeah. <laughs> I thought that was pretty laugh. funny. And also that Bruce would still have it, like still keep it around. And again, not exactly that Bruce, right? Not exactly that. Bring Joker, back but the dinosaur. Similarly, he should have had a damn dinosaur. Oh, my God. And the penny. Um, the penny. And Wait, the what penny. are we doing? Where are we going? This next one better. Ha- Come on, J- James Gunn would be the type to put the dinosaur and the penny in there. Get get find a way to find a way to get that done. I'm gonna ask him on Twitter. Like, can we get the dinosaur and the penny back? We're please, moving in a bad direction. Please. Bad caves. Now it's time for the most meta uh, clip of the multiverse. We see a giant mechanical spider, and we see uh, Nick Cage do battle with it as Kyle slash Superman in the Superman Lives suit. Um, I think he makes a mighty fine looking Superman. I was quite surprised with how yeah. okay I was with it. And I was also quite surprised with how taken aback I was with like, oh, a live action kind of not mulleted, but long haired Superman like that. Yeah. You haven't really seen that yet. It looked good. <laughs> it looked real good. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> I hate spiders. So, but it was a cool, um, it was cool that he got such a it was like a minute long like all the other cameos were like five seconds like i'm here i'm looking and he got like a whole action scene yeah like, it was really cool i thought and kind of like an aggressive one like he seemed like more of yeah. an edgier superman in that scene the darker in general the universe um is this joke too meta does it matter uh <laughs> i think i think it works on two levels because for people who know they know and for people who don't know it's like Oh shit! There's a universe where Nicolas Cage is Superman. Like, yeah. <laughs> that's hilarious. Uh, yeah. I did it. I I explained it because I, to my wife because I wanted to, and she was like, "Oh shit, that's really cool." But she, yeah. I'm pretty sure she was like, "What the fuck, Nicolas Cage? That's hilarious." 
<laughs> yeah, I saw Death of Superman Lives. Um, I, I never saw that. I want to see. Pretty that. interesting because it, it, it actually has Burton in it. You know, talking about it. Kevin Smith is in it, talking about it. Um, that's where I got the the info from. But there was also a, a pretty famous. I want to say either stand up or Q and A that Kevin Smith did, where he said that. Um, the he was given the di- three directives when he was writing the script for Superman Lives. Um, he didn't want to see him in the suit. He didn't want to see him fly. And in the third act, he had to fight a uh, mechanical spider. I like how they did the spider, but he's still <laughs> they went against the other two. Like, that's the, the dumbest shit I've ever heard. Did you ever hear the other rumor about that? That they did make no. the spider or whatever, or at least digitally create Oh, the and they used it for, for Wild, 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 Wild West. West. <laughs> yeah. Which, that's- like you just infected another film with your bad That's ideas. That's hilarious, and it made it. I mean, it was such a bad movie, but I mean, I was a kid. I think I liked it as a kid. It was stupid. I haven't rewatched it as an adult. I'm scared, bro. You know how they do the meme with the with the uh, dominoes that they get yeah. bigger. It's just like that. It's like throwing the spider into Wawa West. Will Smith slapping Chris Rock <laughs> like that. That's what. <laughs> that's, a tra- that's that's a trajectory. That goes on there. Um, Nicholas Cage, <laughs> Superman. Nicholas Cage, Will Superman. Smith slapping Chris Rock. Chris Rock. That's <laughs> it. That's it. Um, so Barry implores the Dark Speedster to stop and allow him to fix the timeline. Angry, the Dark Speedster attempts to kill Barry, but impales 2013 Barry, who sacrifices himself to save uh, everyone. And it wipes the dark speedster from the timeline. I thought that this also, the wiping of the timeline was very similar to how um, Eobard was killed in the first season of The Flash. At the same yeah. kind of dissipating um, scenario. So I really, really like that. Uh, the multiverse corrects itself. And in a tearful moment, Barry travels to the day his mom is killed and says goodbye. Although he does so pretending to be a stranger. Uh, he sets things back to the way they were. However, he makes a minor change in the past, which creates new evidence in the present that proves Henry's innocence. Um, like I said, very touching moment in the grocery store. The only thing that robs this moment is my knowledge and my emotions towards the moment I saw in the show. But I think if this is the first time you've heard this story, this is an incredibly emotional moment and an incredibly mature moment for Barry to allow this to happen. Um, for the betterment of the rest of the world. I love that. I mean, I was all, I was all emotional. I was like, this is great. My baby boy. That's my, that's my, that's my, you know, like, <laughs> I've seen it before for sure. I don't know. I just loved it. I, was, I, I like, I like, I like tell your mom that you love her. Cause she likes to hear that kind of stuff. I like that line. Yeah. In yeah. There. Um, I'm a kid. I'm a dad too. I I fucking I, all that stuff hits me. All the parent stuff always hits me from both directions because yeah. I am a child and a parent. I'm like yeah, you can oh. see you can see things from both. Yeah, <laughs> it's like arrows to both ways. I always bug out in these scenes because I'm always like, it's got to be so weird for a stranger to just walk up and have all these strong emotions <laughs> to everything that you say. Like they know why they're emoting, right? But yeah. you, like that woman has no idea why this strange. She's man. like, "Oh, bendito, you scary little motherfucker." Yeah. He, he says something like, "I don't know you very well, but can I hug you? <laughs> you need a hug. <laughs> like, you need a hug, bro." Um, and I, like I said, uh, I gotta find the actress's name, but I thought she did a great job in the scene, and I thought Ezra had a lot of emotion. Like you know, watching that that single tear, um, in that scene, I thought it was pretty cool. I like the uh, music choice. Uh, very good stuff. That's the. It was the um, Rosita stuff. Yeah. Uh, is it no? Is that her name? Rosalina. I, yeah. Yeah. Rosalina. Rosalina. Um, so, I, 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 I mean, I don't really. I'm not really familiar with her stuff. I just. It, it was a good music choice for the moment. I thought. I found it later on afterwards. It's a uh, Mir- Mirabel Verdu who plays the mom and Ron Livingston who plays the dad. <laughs> um, the ambiguous uh, Latina. What you do know. you think about the moving the can? Oh, that was great. That was sweet. I mean, I've had a. I when he looked up at the camera I, for a second, I thought he was trying to like sh- uh, be the person that looks up at the camera when they get the footage. Oh yes, I, I thought so as well. I, I, I did like, not get. I did not get what happened. Yeah, first, yeah, I didn't 100%. get it until they explained it to me. I felt I was, like, I was like, fuck. 
Um, and I love that Bruce Wayne created the tech to sort of, uh, you know, splice the security cam footage and stuff. Yeah. Um, I, so the can thing I also like because it make it explains the ripple effect. Yeah, he fucks. He still ended up like. On yeah, the you wrong still change path. stuff, bro. Uh, and yeah, like. <laughs> I guess this is the first time I'm thinking about it. So I'm having a lot of thoughts come to my mind. You just saw what happened with, with changing stuff. And you're the only reason why you're there is to make things go the way that they did. And you still change something. <laughs> right? Like, wasn't that the whole goal? To go back in time and make sure things go exactly how they were supposed to? I guess, I guess he thought this one is a <laughs> lot smaller, maybe. Uh, <laughs> I just don't learn hey. shit, man. Barry's never learned a damn thing. <laughs> uh, Henry's innocent, though. Maybe he'll be Billy Crudup next time, which would make a lot of sense because then Dr. Manhattan, Doomsday Clock, we bring it all back. <laughs> <laughs> that wouldn't that be funny as hell? <laughs> that would be Crudup. insane. I was your father the whole time. <laughs> okay. What? Yeah, that- <laughs> what? Um, so... After returning to present day and helping exonerate Henry, Barry is contacted by Bruce Wayne, who looks different as a result of Barry's timeline change. Uh, I'd like you, sir, to explain your myriad of feelings about this as you saw this unfold. At first, I thought they were saying that George Clooney was the next Batman. <laughs> to which I laughed because I was right. like, what the fuck? Oh, because uh, it is George Clooney, I- people. <clears throat> yeah. It was George Clooney, which is like, what? Okay, that's hilarious. It was a funny moment because they dropped the F-bomb. You know, you only get one in a PG-13 movie. And he's like, who the fuck is this? Yeah. Very funny moment. Uh, I, but I thought it'd be nuts if Clooney was actually the next Batman. But I, because I have that in my head that whoever is the next Bruce Wayne is going to die in his movie. I think it's one, it's really convenient. You think Final Crisis gonna, style? No, I think some other way maybe maybe they follow through with the batman rp thing but i i I don't i don't know how they're gonna do it but i have it in my head that they will one because they already have um they already have their batman movies and they already put set them in another universe and it's been said that this guy david zaslav is not with having like multiple Bruce Wayne films or whatever. Yeah. That that and uh James Gunn has mentioned a lot that he's basing his movie off Bat- Grant Morrison's Batman and Robin. And, and they're and not Grant getting Morrison's- like you said, they're not getting rid of the Joker. They're not getting rid of um the Batman. Like those things are not going anywhere anytime no, soon. Those are all the Else Worlds things. And I just feel like if they did the main universe Batman as Dick Grayson, that would solve a lot of things. That would hit a lot of check marks. A lot they, of convenient they, corporate and they, check marks. They wrote, they wrote the contingency plan for a Batmanless universe. That's what this was supposed to be post this film, right? Like a Batmanless, or at least an older Batmanless universe. That's why Keaton was going to come in, possibly mentor a Batgirl, um, et cetera, and so forth. But like I said, with the Batman making money and uh, critically acclaimed and then same thing with the Joker, those things ain't going anywhere anytime soon. As a matter of fact, I heard a rumor that around the little headquarters, Todd Phillips, they call him one Bill Phil, bro. (laughs) 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 I'll just leave that where that I'll just leave that where that's at. Um in a post credit scene, Barry tells a drunken Arthur Curry about his experience traveling the timeline. I was going to say there was it was funny because the very first thing like when they started filming the flash the very first set photos we saw were Supergirl and Michael Keaton at the courthouse which is the end of the scene so we already saw the first thing we saw was the alternate ending that we'll never see let's let's talk about that for a bit before we get to this post credit so the ending Three of the endings. film the, the ending of this film, which features George Clooney reprising his role as alternate Bruce Wayne due to Barry's actions, changed multiple times during post-production due to the constant change in leadership at Warner Brothers in 2022. The uh, original ending shot for film conceived by then-heads Walter Hamada and Toby Emmerich would have had Keaton's Batman, as well as Ka- uh, Kaye's Supergirl, continue existing in the new timeline, but will erase Cavill and Affleck's roles respectively from the dc 
a continuity with plans for a sequel of the flash building up to crisis on infinite earths a crisis on infinite earths film uh despite cw having already done it um this reportedly was set up was to set up the then in development background film before it was canceled in august of the same year as keaton was set to reprise his role as batman in that film after the merger of warner brothers and and discovery uh and the removal of emmerich and hamada executives michael de luca and pamela abdi took over and decided to keep cavill in the continuity and reshoot the ending cavill shot his part for his ending along with his cameo for black adam in september godot also filmed the scene for this ending this was intended to drum up interest for the planned man of steel sequel and a third wonder woman film before both of those were canceled in november james gunn and peter saffron became the new heads of the now DC studios and planned a complete reboot of the franchise under the new name, the DC universe. As a result, Cavill no longer was expected to reprise his role. Um, and his scene was cut. Uh, while the ending was worked again, they reworked it again with, without Ka- Kaye, uh, Keaton and Cavill. And now it's just Clooney. And according to them, the final ending with Clooney Miller, uh, the final ending with Clooney and Miller was shot in January of this year. Wow. That makes sense, though. I remember hearing about those reshoots earlier this year. Bonkers. Um, uh, it, so this ending is kind of a nothing ending in the best way? Yeah. As it I says mean, nothing the, in stone. I guess the idea is like, we never, if we never, if we put him here, because <clears throat> I, I mean, I guess some dude commented this on Twitter and it got like an approval from James Gunn. So I'm going to take that as, I guess that's what it means where it's like Ezra or Ezra Miller's flash is in this universe where George Clooney is Batman. Yes. And, and so is Jason Momoa. So when this Aquaman movie comes out, that's where that is. And that is not the new DC universe. That is just like, where you all exist now that's it you live there we'll probably never see you as these people again i was i i get a hundred percent what you're talking about the um because i had the same kind of feeling is this idea that although we are watching this and flash our protagonist this is not the world we will be playing in anymore yeah. and i thought wow what a bold kind of what a bold kind of thing um I think it's funny what? to imagine it like we put Ezra Miller in the Batman and Robin universe. That's your punishment. <laughs> you, get to, <laughs> you get to live in the Batman and Robin universe. Enjoy. You remember the scene in a uh, flashpoint where he uh, is like showing off his flash ring and he uh, pulls out his students eobards. Yes. He's like, what the hell? It should have nipples like all over it. Like, oh, like, he's like, no, no. <laughs> Suit me up, Uncle Alfred. <laughs> Let's go. Let's get Alicia Silverstone. Yeah, yeah, won't. Don't be scared. Um, yeah, I, I, I'd watch, I'd watch the Flash take on old. Clooney, like I'd watch him take on Mr. Freeze. <laughs> I'd watch, <laughs> you know, like old man Arnold Schwarzenegger in that big ass Ivan Ooze suit or whatever. I'd watch that. I'd watch um, um him take on Uma Thurman. I'd, I'd like to see a couple of those guys get another bite at that apple. But yeah, in a world full of superhero redemption, do you think we ever see Clooney mm-hmm. in the suit? I think, do you, I think we ever I think see Clooney do anything. I think that was the closest we're gonna get to that, and I think that's how they sold it to him. I think that's why he did it. <laughs> he's like he can just be bruce wayne for two seconds and it's a funny little thing uh andy machete has gone on record of saying if they make a flash sequel that he can't see anybody playing barry allen but ezra miller is I that understand. selective wor- is that selective wording in like if it's a sequel like it's, I, <laughs> I think the idea was like- if it made if it made the money anyway like beside regardless of the controversy then they would but it didn't yeah. So I <laughs> you know, like it kinda it kinda flopped. I think <laughs> right now, according to Wiki at least, a uh, time of recording, um, on a budget of two hundred and twenty million, if I'm thinking of the high end, it's made about one thirty five. So it's made about it's halfway point, but people also say that sometimes the budget is 
not as high as they would like to admit on occasion. Warner Brothers got the funds, but it's not about this. Um, I mean, it is sort of about this doing as not as well as they thought it would, but this is now becoming a string. Do you fear what this will do to the anticipation of things like Blue Beetle? Uh, I think Blue Beetle was already fighting it up. <laughs> I gotta tell you. Right. Um, I do think it's gonna be better than people expect, and then it's gonna have a good word of mouth. Um, uh, I think it'll do better than people expect, but it was always fighting an uphill battle. Uh, I think though the good, the the maybe one of the good things to come out of this is that people will work harder to be a little more creative when they make these movies. It's not so much to ask. I don't think. I don't think. <laughs> I don't. I don't expect every. Um, I really, really don't expect every superhero movie to be some groundbreaking, formula changing thing. I really right. liked The Flash. Yeah, uh, I, I I liked this movie. Uh, I thought it. Same. I thought I I thought it was very. I thought it was a really good, like regular superhero movie, like one of the better ones. You know, uh, like because you can do the same kind of movie really, uh, really badly, and it feels like I've seen this before. You know? Yeah. But I feel like it hit a lot of the same uh, superhero uh, pl- tropes, and I didn't feel like it. I didn't feel like I saw it before, but I definitely felt like it was a superhero movie. It was great. I like I like superheroes. And shit, I like. I, I I I think no, but I also think that that it says something about its quality because not only did it do superhero tropes, but both me and you read Flashpoint, and some of these is, scenes are ripped directly from that. Yeah. Yeah, so you yeah. know, you know where a ten-minute scene is going before it even starts in a kind of way. So it has to keep you entertained for you not to just, I okay, I get it. They're gonna do the lightning strike. They're gonna do the, you know, saving from the the base, etc. But I thought it really worked, even as somebody who knew the story mostly what they were gonna tell. I I got it. They they it was like hearing somebody tell a joke you've told before, but they're telling it so well to another group of people. Yeah, yeah. They're just like, yeah, go ahead, bro. That's really you know? good, brother. Yeah, like yeah. That. Yeah, get it. I like yeah. this. I will. I'll put it next to my other movies <clears throat> on 4K or whatever. Yeah. Um, I think it was a really nice goodbye to all these movies. I think so too. I think, um, uh, and you you don't really get that sometimes. I think even even when we thought Zack Snyder's Justice League was like a like a like a truce of some sorts, there was still like digs and still right petty stuff going around. And yeah. Still, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, still a lot of that. So it felt. I, I like I said, I remember watching this movie at times and some of the lighthearted moments and the lighthearted music or the touching moments and the touching music. I'm like, this is a different DC universe right here. Like this is a different yeah. and not and then I, I get to myself like, well, you know, you can't do everybody this way. And then I'm arguing with myself. I'm like, well, you don't necessarily have to, but this could have been another flavor in that same buffet that DC was presenting. And it, could, it quite possibly could. Like, I was at the time complaining, basically at the time, saying, like, this could have been, like, you know, like, five years ago, this could have set them, with this tone could have set them on the right direction. Um, but what's done is done. And we now have a new direction to go in. And hopefully this is the step in the right direction. Um, we'll see what I they do with funny. Ezra and all this. But, yeah. I think it's funny that <laughs> the last movie in the DC Universe, I ended up enjoying and, like, and 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 a lot of people also enjoy it. like it's like a lot of people liked it but then it's a meme that it's bad i was like well, that's right been, and that i've been here before wait a minute yeah yeah <laughs> yeah and now not only that but like for all intents and purposes when you're done with your 13 film binge of the dceu you have started happy and kind of ended happy you I may not remember the stuff in the middle, you know. If I you probably if you, won't be watching thirteen DC movies, I tell you that much. <laughs> very, very few franchises get to start good and end good. Some of them have to find their footing in the middle, and and still fall off a cliff. Um, and while this took some time to find its footing, you can't argue the directors all had their visions and got to do what they did. We'll see what a more quality controlled DCU looks like, um, but. Are you are you fine to be done with these characters? Have you have you? I was, I was done 
when <laughs> Zack Snyder's Justice League finished. <laughs> yeah. like, I was good. I was good. Uh, this I thought that's why I was pleasantly surprised that this worked as like a little epilogue to that movie. Yeah. Like, oh, he discovered time travel at the end and he decided, well, what if I tried this? And then you know, he got to say goodbye to all the DC movies. <laughs> yeah. Was like, yeah. Okay. Well, that's pretty cool. I'll buy that. I'll yeah, this, it. this does seem like the seventh issue arc of the Flash comic that came after the yeah, big the event. event that you yeah. know that was Zack Snyder's Justice League. Yeah, I'm down. I'm I'm gonna keep it. I'll put it in my little pocket with the other movies, the other three, I guess. I, I'll I'll might put Wonder Woman in there, the first yeah. one. <laughs> yeah, uh, yes, he's still supposedly up in the air, and um. I wonder what they're gonna do in Aquaman to signify that I'm okay we won't be follow Aquaman. we won't be following Arthur Curry anymore. I okay he's not double that. dipping, I'm, right? I remember they first shot a thing with freaking um they shot it with uh Michael Affleck. Keaton. Oh yeah, Keaton they and shot they shot it with, with Affleck. And then they shot it with Affleck. I wonder what was the plan at the point that they shot it with Affleck. Like where were they? I, I thought that's when he was popping. Oh, it must have been when they thought when they were gonna bring Gal and, and Cavill back post Black Adam. Okay, okay. That little yeah, that that's... little time period where they were like, "All right, we can do this again." <laughs> and I was like, "Nah, Kali, never mind." Yeah, yeah. Sun, sunrise, sunset. I do believe if okay, this is the thing I I wanted to talk about. To me, I still think Crisis is completely on the table. If anything, yeah, this, this yeah, is absolutely. the table being set for Crisis. A new one. Um, Yes. Um, do, do you see a timeline on that? Well, if you had to put a timeline on that, what, what, what would you say? It took us, what, eight years to do a uh, get to the end of Thanos and, and all that jazz? It sounds um, like it would be, um, <clears throat> I don't know, maybe the James Gunn's 10 year plan, right? I guess 10 years. 10 years works? Uh, 10 years works, but that's a long time. I don't want to die. That's true. Uh, and I don't Try know not that. To. I don't know that it's like who knows superhero movies. Who knows, right? That's scary yeah. stuff. Yeah, with the if, if box office keeps being like this, we ain't getting nothing. They ain't no ten yeah. nothing. <laughs> no um, crisis. But I got I, my crisis. It's on the CW. <laughs> there's no way, and I, you know, God willing, everyone's still alive and healthy and all that jazz. There's no way we don't reference this universe. Oh, a one hundred, one thousand percent. Henry Cavill flies up on that screen. The whole Justice League shows up. I, pro- I swear they, they're great. And, and then we start the prequels. There wasn't oh, that no. bad. Oh come on, oh, those no. movies weren't that. Are you ready for that? It would be ten years. <laughs> I'm down. I'm gonna be that. I'm gonna be. I'm gonna be there with my arms crossed, shaking my fucking head at all of them, at everybody. It's gonna I said it was gonna happen too. I know it is. I promise you. Ten years from now, people are gonna be like, oh my God. We you know recorded. what? You know what? I watched yeah. that movie with my dad. And I that was it. some heat. Yeah. <laughs> Why was everybody so mad at this? It was obviously trying to do a vision. <laughs> it was yeah, right? to- <laughs> God, people back then were so dumb. <laughs> oh my God. Uh that's that's funny. Yeah, it's they've gotta do it and I can't wait to see what DC does next. Um, but like I said, Muschietti's now supposed to be in charge of Brave and the Bold. Yeah. Um, really looking forward to that. Um, and yeah, it, talk about a like he has a lot he's gonna have to do with that. Like, not only is he introducing Batman, but he's introducing Damien in a sense where he kind of came in on Flash, kind of pre-established. I don't know if that's and, harder or easier to be honest. And Dick <laughs> and Jason. Yeah. And yeah. Tim. You think they do you think he'd do them? Oh. I think that was a promise that they better deliver on. Oh, he said something about the Bat family. He did yeah, say he mention something the about Bat the Bat family. family. Be on screen. Damn right. I'm gonna have to see him. Don't say it and don't deliver. It's too late now. Godly. Look where we're at. George Clooney and the Bat family on screen. <laughs> Let's get it. Cause technically, uh he had a Bat family. <laughs> He brought the bad family on screen in the first place, bro. The Grayson and Barbara Pennyworth. Pennyworth? Yeah, I think that's yeah, what it was. Uh, Pennyworth. Let's never talk about that. Was Pennyworth, oh, Pennyworth no. end up being a, a a freaking... Did it somehow end up being a V for Vendetta prequel? Like, is I that heard, what they were implying? I heard that. And also, Ezra Miller is now in the same universe as the world that has McGregor syndrome. <laughs> <laughs> so I just want 
I just want wow. the world to know that because that's wow. what's going out out there in those streets, bro. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> maybe 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 that was on purpose. They put they did the they did the Morlun. They put him on the poison planet. And they just open no. <laughs> open it takes it open it takes its course. <laughs> Holy hell. But yeah, this this was great. Like I said, it was a love letter to everything that came before it. And um, we'll see what the next, uh, what DC does next. Um, like I said, Blue Beetle is coming up. Uh, we have Joker. What is it? Folledu? Folledu. 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 from us. Again, I said it should have been Joker 2. Joke's on you. Like, it's right there. Just <laughs> 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 repay me the big bucks. Uh, uh, one Bill Phil. Uh, Joker 2, Joke's on you, be coming out. The Batman 2, sometimes coming out. All this stuff obviously being held up by uh, the writer's strike. I also think it's quite bold that people keep announcing things when we haven't figured out how we're going to pay <laughs> they don't people. Give a fuck. <laughs> they don't give a fuck. We haven't figured hey, out how maybe we're gonna flash too, huh? Maybe flash too. Hey, oh, hey. How many flashes hey. y'all want? Five. Who's writing this? Who's writing this? Hello? Hello? They're not listening. They're not listening. Hey, it's Chad DT, bro. <laughs> They're writing hey. Make flash movie question mark. <laughs> <laughs> Write me a flashpoint film. Write me back to the future. Replace oh, Marty no. McFly with <laughs> Oh no. I replace Marty McFly with Barry Allen uh very very good stuff um but you can find out where dc is going next or at least how we feel about where dc is going next by listening to every episode of the major issues podcast yes. uh, it's available every single week every single wednesday knock on vibranium uh we do our best here to provide this insight free but if you'd like to support us there's many ways you can do so first off the pop comic book click Dot com is the home for every single episode of the Major Issues podcast. So if you want to look at our back catalog, how we felt, I think we've covered every DC EU film. Almost certain we have. I gotta go. We might have not done a VVS episode, bro. Hmm. This would be the ten year anniversary. E, let's freaking do it. I got it in IMAX. <laughs> I got it in IMAX. I'm down. <laughs> We can talk about what people hated about it. You know, I'm objective. I can see it. Yeah. I can love it. (laughs) That might be day. That might be coming up soon. Uh, So, yeah, I think we've covered everything uh, since then because we would have started around then. So go back and check out our back catalog. But if you're at comicbookclick.com, hit that shop CBC button. It'll take you to our T public where you can buy merchandise designed exclusively by me. And we get a kickback of every bit of that. You can hit the support C- uh, comic book click button and on the website and get taken to our Patreon for as little as $3 a month, 10 cents a day. You can help us keep our lights on here and afford the hardware and the software that we need to uh, keep making content. Um, we love doing this and we love everyone who helps us on this journey. So thank you everyone who has uh, joined the Patreon, the people who are listening, the people who are telling a friend to tell a friend. And you could also just rate and review this podcast on iTunes. It's the quickest way for us to grow as podcasters and find out what you like and what you don't as Five we continue stars. this journey. Yeah. We act like the other no. ones don't even work. I, None yeah, of that I constructive like criticism bullshit. <laughs> I don't want to hear it. Knew it. There's no reason for it. I don't care. Five stars. <laughs> <laughs> that should be the review. That should be the review right there. Five stars. That's it. Hey, five stars, baby. Five stars. Um, and only because we can't put six. So go ahead and uh, rate and hey, review on us. Me. Yeah. We... <laughs> we uh, <laughs> the the more good ratings we get, the more we appear on other people's uh, pages when they're looking for this kind of content. So make sure that we get discovered and grow the click, as I know we do, because I've been to the future, uh, and we do become um, one of the latest and greatest things to come to comic books and comic book media. But I can't tell you how we do it, because then, uh, you know, The Rock something, something. It's, it's late. But <laughs> uh, <laughs> we do, I do a lot here. I do it out here as part of a uh, comic book click and I get by with a little help from my friends. Uh, John Escudero, definitely uh, one of my dearest ones, but he does a little bit of deep diving in one of his own fandoms, the world of professional wrestling and pop culture over at Dirt Sheet Radio. You want to tell the people, uh, do your plugs yeah. and tell the people what you got going on over there? You're coming over and listen to Dirt Sheet Radio. Uh, we talk about pro wrestling in a, 
<laughs> way too we take this thing way too seriously it's just pro wrestling <laughs> <laughs> but it's a great podcast come over and check it out if that's your thing uh and if pop culture is your thing you can check us out on social media too we cover yes. all that stuff are we putting a link to Dirty's Ra- Dirty Radio's Facebook on the description for this episode or the notes for this episode? So go ahead and check that out. But uh, just look up Dirt Sheet Radio. I believe just on Google and it'll pop up on Facebook. Um, so do that. People follow what they're doing over there, doing some pretty, pretty cool stuff. Um, and always on the coverage. I find out some of the comic book news first from them. So, and they're a reliable source because I know the founder. So, uh, check them out. Uh, check out what they're doing over there and come back here next week where we'll be tackling some of the latest and greatest things to come to comic books and comic book media. Uh, oh, yeah, and Facebook.com slash comic book click, Instagram at comic book click, and use that hashtag comic book click to talk about the latest and greatest things to come to comic books and comic book media. Um, and remember, whether you live in this timeline or another, are from this earth or a part of infinite earths, remember every problem doesn't have a solution. Remember life is full of surprises. And if you think that's Looney, our Batman just might be George Clooney. Remember, we are the click. And always remember that you, yes, you are worthy.